Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given to the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a special meeting on Wednesday, March 25, 2009, at 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Thank you, City Secretary. Put us back, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Uh, Alex, uh, would you please lead us in the invocation? Please turn off the phones. I'd like to give a small announcement before we pray. What I would like to say is that the churches of Brownsville, all the churches, they should participate. They should come and help the commissioners and the mayor because the churches have a lot of people that they represent. And if the churches, like uh, each commissioner, if the churches participate in coming here and doing the prayer, like the pastor here, he comes here and he cooperates. I come here, but sometimes I, I, I got things to do. But all the churches in Brownsville should participate. They should say, well, we got 500 people, we got 300 people, and that way, the city of Brownsville can help also whatever they need. That's Pastor, my opinion. Pastor Burke's already uh, going to do that. He's going to get the churches who want to participate, and he's going to organize it to where I know who's going to come here. Okay? Please lead us in the word of prayer. Yes. There's a lot of Christian groups out there that they're playing church. They should come over here and help you all. Thank you. Okay. Father, in the name of... Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, your son that died on the cross for us. We love you, Lord, and we ask you, please, Lord, help us to open this meeting in harmony, like brothers, and uh, we need progress for Brownsville in the Valley in Texas, and protect us, Father God, here. We need protection here on the border and help Mexico. In the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, may the blood of Jesus protect us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, please be seated. Um, Everybody's welcome. Thank you for coming. It is a great day, and uh, we're here to do the people's business, and there's going to be a presentation on a, the impact fee, which we've been working on for the past four years. I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, I just uh, ask that you allow those who are going to give the presentation to first give the presentation, then we'll open it up for discussion and questions and everything else. So uh, would you please read the... Um, Item number one. Item number one, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2009-1217-C, an ordinance amending ordinance number 1990-1217 by adopting the maximum allowable and actual water and wastewater impact fees, providing that this ordinance be cumulative, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. <coughs> Item, num item number two, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2009-1213-A, amending ordinance number 1990-1213 and ordinance number 1990-1217 by adopting the updated and revised land use assumptions within the certified water and wastewater service area of the Pu Brownsville Public Utilities Board, adopting the ad updated and revised capital improvements plan for the Brownsville Public Utilities Board, Providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners, uh, thank you for uh, being here on this special day uh, or on scheduled meeting day uh, today. Basically, today you have two ordinances before you. Uh, the first one uh, relates to the actual uh, approving of a, of a number, of an impact dollar number, impact fee dollar number. The second one is adopting uh, the capital improvements plan for PUB and also the land use assumptions. 
uh, I believe that action should, it should be taken first whenever you uh, render a vote. But, uh, <coughs> but the land use assumptions is for a 10-year plan. Um, the uh, City of Brownsville Planning Department provided uh, data for the land use assumptions that was given to uh, Black and Reach uh, for, for their uh, incorporating into their studies. Behind me, you have the consultants of Black and Reach, also for Turner Colley and Bradley with a water a master plan. Um, so behind me uh, is an, an summary of people that will answer any question that you may have. We have the Capital Improvements uh, Advisory Committee. Uh, we will acknowledge them later for their work. Uh, I believe uh, themselves and, and staff and, and QB staff are much more knowledgeable on, on the impact fee matters now than we have ever been, uh, but we will definitely acknowledge them later. Um, I do not want to speak much because there's two presentations. The first presentation will be <coughs> by Mr. Arturo Farias, uh, member of the PUB board, but I also do uh, want to call him Leandro because I spent most of the day today with, with PUB staff. I'm very appreciative that they called and met with, uh, and gave me the opportunity to review these presentations and ask questions. Um, so, so I think you would, uh, they have very good information, information that presents the big picture. Uh, I do not envy your position because they are coming from the PUB side. Uh, you have to approach it from the citywide side uh, of all the needs that, that the city uh, requires for it to run successfully. But, but I think the information provided to you will definitely help you uh, come up with, with, with direct, your positive decision tonight or later on. If you do not, um, cannot vote in or on these ordinances today, please do not close the public hearing. Once you close the public hearing, we have 30 days to actually approve uh, the number. So, so if you want to continue, you can continue, but do not close the public hearing. Okay. So um, I believe Mr. Farias is ready with his presentation. And then uh, I, I do want to invite it. It's really your, your decision, but also to hear from Landro and, and uh, because, you know, he's, he's got a very good presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Medina. Welcome to our chambers, Mr. Farias. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, just wanted to mention that um, uh, John Brusiak would, could not be here tonight. He was in San Antonio in a conference, got stuck in San Antonio, so he could not be here tonight. Uh, I'm very grateful to be here to, you know, shed a little bit of information uh, as to what I can help in, in enlighten and hopefully you all can ask some questions of us that, that hopefully will help you in making uh, your determination as to the impact fee. Uh, ask a question? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do a brief presentation and, and then... I just want to ask, what's, <clears throat> what, what was so important in Austin that he had to be there when this is one of the most important things PUB is well, he was, with he the was, city. Yeah, he was here last time, and tonight he had a scheduled conference uh, oh. with all these municipal utility uh, uh, that get together, and he was talking about Hurricane Dolly and the impact on hurricanes on communities and everything that the PUB went through as far as Hurricane Dolly was concerned. And so that was an important conference that he had to attend. He, he was in flight back, but I guess, you know, he just missed <coughs> his flight. Okay, uh, please go forward. Okay, well, I just have a, a brief presentation as to, you know, uh, where we are with PUB and as far as our capital improvement plan. And I think, uh, you know, in starting off, you know, I just also, I'm very humbled as to being able to come up here and speak on, on this issue. Uh, I know there's been other people that have spent countless of hours and I just want to also just express my thankfulness and gratefulness to the kayak committee for all the work that they put in and hours and hours as to going through that whole process and they were really a, a third party that was subjective in, in them analyzing all this information and making sure that they verified all the data and, and understood what was being presented to them and they had a lot of questions. So I just wanted to thank them for all the hard work that they did. Um, as far as uh, just an introduction, uh, I'm just going to go briefly through a little bit of where we were as far as our meter connections. Um, 
the typical user of, of, of who's out there, uh, you know, connecting to the meters, and then the actual 10-year plan of the capital improvement plan, and then at the same time as to what revenues we're collecting right now and, and how that plays out as today, and then trying to correlate that information in the, as far as uh, this 10-year plan. I'll go ahead and start um, by going to the first uh, graph. If, um, how do I do this? I just okay. Thank you. Uh, this graph uh, basically shows uh, in October 2005. You can see that we were started with 42,000 uh, customers, and the actual growth during that period of, of that particular month compared to the prior year, you can see that we were at a 4% growth. And as you can tell, you know, our number of customers grew from 42,000 up to February 09, where we're above 45,000. As far as the growth is concerned, and as you all well know, is that you've seen a downward trend as, as a percentage growth. And so in February 09, we basically had a, we're, we're at a 1% growth. So you can see that we had a very healthy housing market in this particular area here, and we had a lot of growth going on, and then little by little as the issues started coming with a housing bubble burst, you know, you're starting to see the downward trend as to where we are today. Uh, this is a wastewater overview of account growth. And as also you can see, we were at 41,000 customers October 05, and then you know we're a little bit below 45,000. And again, you can see the growth in in, in those uh, time periods where we had we're at about a 4% growth, and then we kind of leveled off a little bit above 3%, and then uh, we we were at 2% growth. Again, this is a change from same month prior year. So this particular month is comparing. February 09 to February 08, so that is that percentage change. So you can see that you know throughout that four-year time period, uh, we've seen a, a downward turn because of the e uh, economic issues that we, the nation is going through, and that is affecting the <coughs> local economy. Uh, this is a current and proposed maximum allowable impact fees and. I just went ahead and took uh, today's um, meter size of five eighths to three quarters of an inch uh, equivalent service unit of one, and we have a 280 combined impact fee. Uh, we have the one inch that had an ESU of two, so you basically gets multiplied by two because of the water flow, and that was a, a, it's a fee right now of $560 and one and a half inch, two inch. So you can see that the majority of our growth is coming from this area, even, even though we have other meter sizes that are three inch, four inch, all the way to 10 inch, but most of our growth is gonna come in this area, and this is where I just wanted to highlight what the uh, impact fee would be if, uh, if we were to go to the maximum allowable impact fee. If we go to the maximum allowable of 3,486, then you can see that the, this is what the fee will be, and this is a, the change 3,206, so that's a 1,145 percent increase because we had a very low impact fee. The one inch, uh, we have had a, the ESUs jump from two to two and a half, so uh, that has been a, uh, an update from the American Water Works Association as to the water flow. So. We're seeing a change in this ESUs jumping from two to two and a half to two and a half to five to eight. So that has another factor built in and, and increasing the fee. So we were a $560 fee for a one inch, and now it's going to be 8,715 at 3,486. One and a half inch would be 17,430. Two inch would be $27,888. So that's uh, at a what the fee would look okay. like. Before you go, before you go forward, does anybody have any questions on that? Uh, do you want to explain, like, how many units will be serviced, or 
the two inch or the uh, 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 the 2.5 ESUs? Right. Uh, right now, uh, I guess uh, to answer your question, the current water meter connections uh, we're at today is 43,338, and the uh, the 10-year plan calls at, on a 2% growth that our water connections are going to grow up to 52,000 connections. So that's a difference of 9,397 connections. At the maximum uh, allowable uh, impact fee, it would generate a budgeted number of 13,052,000. Uh, and on the, on the actual wastewater, again, uh, the big growth is in the three-quarter inch, and that would uh, have a budgeted number of 20,101,000. So most of the dollars that are going to be generated are coming from this particular four uh, meter sizes. And so 97% of, of the monies being generated are coming from this three, from this four uh, meter sizes. So I just wanted to highlight, I'm sure you've looked at these numbers, and not to repeat a lot of stuff, but I just wanted to highlight where the actual dollars are being generated on the on the impact fee. So, you know, the the 13 million and the 20 million that adds up to you know, 33 million of budgeted numbers that would come in from the impact fee, and mostly it's going to be generated from the three quarter inch meter size. Uh, the type user uh, profile, uh, we went through kind of a database uh, at, at PUB and, and I just wanted to highlight, you know, what, where the effects are going to be. Uh, as you know, it, it affects the residents and it also affects small business, uh, auto sales, law firms, doctor's offices, uh, taquerias, uh, you know, daycares, uh, Dollar General stores, small churches, pawn shops. So all those small businesses all use a three-quarter inch meter. And so that is where that is, is the impact is, is not only on residences, but also on small businesses. On the one inch, uh, you're, you're starting to step up in, as to so the water flow requirements. And you're going to have maybe some schools in there, uh, some big homes that have uh, large uh, water irrigation needs, swim pools, uh, churches, fried chicken, a large church like St. Mary's, uh, they would all use a one inch. Uh, the 1.5, again, you're looking at, at maybe apartments uh, that are eight plexus and up. Uh, other businesses that have uh, requirements like uh, convenience stores, like a stripe, that would uh, be a one and a half inch. Once you get to the two inch, uh, then you're starting to see the schools, uh, maybe <coughs> banks, uh, because of fire safety issues. Uh, you, 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 the fire sprinkler systems that are uh, included in, in, in offices where they have a lot of employees, require a two inch uh, meter. And uh, as you get into your bigger system, <coughs> like your four inches, uh, which again are not going to be generating a lot of dollars, those are your hospitals and your large hotels. So that's just to highlight the, the, where the impact of, of the businesses that are going to be affected uh, by the change of the impact fee. Uh, let's look at the profile of a developer and a non-developer. The developer, usually there's, I guess, you could uh, group them into three different types. You could have a small developer that has 10 lots, a medium developer that does 30 to 40 lots, and then you have your large developer that does a face in subdivisions at, with 100 lots or more. A non-developer would be a residential lot owner, apartment builders, and you know those those would be considered non-developers. Uh, in 2000, there were some model subdivision rules, and, and the only reason I wanted to highlight this is that in in, in uh, effective November 16, 2000, there was a city ordinance, and basically it it required 
any uh, developers that, that once they subdivided, they had to pay the cost of water meters and all the necessary connection equipment and, and fees and everything up front. So you have all these large developments that have been occurring in the city of Brownsville and all of those have prepaid those fees uh, from that time on. Uh, this is the last slide that I have, and I just wanted to highlight, you know, some of the activity that's been going on with our revenue collections in that area. And I'll just start real briefly. Fiscal year 2007, uh, we had 1,613 meters that came uh, that were developers, and 393 meters that were non-developers. So there was actually 2,006 connections that occurred that year. And you can see the percentages, 80% came from developers and 20% came from non-developers. In fiscal year 2008, uh, you saw the, the change of connections dropping to 792 connections and 51% came from developers at 405 connections, 49% from non-developers. Uh, today, uh, we have 172 connections, uh, 125 connections are coming from non-developers and 47 connections came from developers. So you can see that the percentages has, has switched. 73% are coming in from walk-ins to the PUB. And, and, and so I just wanted to highlight right now that based on this particular number for the last five months, I'm, you know, I projected based on this number that this year we might see 413 connections occurring this particular fiscal year and, and, and I'm using the same percentages for the last five months as to, you know, 300 might come from walk-ins and 113 come from developers. Those are assumptions. This is actual data that we're picking up. Now, I want to highlight the numbers. This, this combined difference of 6,455,000 uh, back in 2005 when there was a proposed impact fee of 2,133 this number basically dic tells you that if, if we would have collected all those fees that we, we could have collected $6.4 million up through uh, February uh, through impact fees. That's just an assumption. Uh, we had our impact fees at $280, so we don't know if by doing the change if we would have collected all of that, but that's just a budgeted number that's out there that if, if we would have, if all these connections, we would have collected $2,133, we would have had $6.4 million in revenue. Uh, down here in this particular uh, area, what I'm estimating in the last two and a half years, how much of it came, uh, would, is coming from developers and coming from non-developers. And, and all I did was I just summed up the numbers and I figured that in the last two and a half years with an uh, economy coming down and more pressure uh, from developers uh, not doing any more developments and a lot of people come in that are normal walk-in customers that have <coughs> lots out there that are going ahead and putting meters, that 34% in the last two, two and a half years are coming in from walk-ins and 66% were from developers. So you can see from a high uh, of fiscal year 2000, you had 2006 connections, and then it, it went ahead and dropped. And you can see the percentages, you know, flipping, that it flipped from 20% uh, non-developer, and now it's at 73%. So the numbers are low, and so you have more walk-ins that are coming to PUB. And, 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 and I looked at the numbers, and you can see that the walk-ins are averaging anywhere in the 300 number. So every year you're going to have a certain small business people, residents that have not prepaid their, their meters that are coming in and those are coming in and, and, and they're requiring meters. And, and, and the idea is that if, if the fees are generated that you would collect so much money from developers, I mean ideally here 4.5 million would have come from developers and the other 2.5 million would come from, from people walking into the PUB. That's just an assumption. It's not reality, but I'm just applying the numbers that we have for the last two and a half years 
looking at the numbers and just making an assumption that if, if we would have had a $2,133 fee and everybody decided to pay it up, that that's what we could have collected from a developer and a non-developer. So basically, you're saying that you don't have any factors that would indicate that anybody would pay that $2,133 fee or how many people would have been excluded from paying that on the 300 people that walked in? We, we don't know the sensitivity of, of that price, you know, how much is, you get to a certain por, par, part uh, that, you know, where is it inelastic, where the price is going to go ahead and At what point does the market stop? Right. And so we, we really don't know that answer, and, and, but I just wanted to highlight the commission as to this is what's happening today, and, and, and these are the numbers that we're seeing as what's going on in, in the marketplace today. And so through right now, we've got 172 new meters? Uh, we have 172 meters for the last five months. Last and, five months. And 125 of that came from non-developers, and 47 came from developers. <coughs> and so Thank you. The, 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 um, I'm sorry, Mr. Garza. I have a question. On, on 700 lots, prepaid at $280 per lot, comes out to uh, 196000 versus 2133 which was set by former commissioners and some that are here now, those are gone. If, if the rate had stayed at 2133, that would have generated, could have generated 14,931,000. Uh, I, I, well, I according to my numbers, uh, unless, okay. unless my calculator is no. The question I have, how much time does a developer have to, to develop, in other words, if, if, if someone prepaid $280 per lot for 700 lots, how much time does he have or she have to develop? A year? Two years? And basically, what it, it, is, there it's, is there a cutoff? Is there a uh, cutoff? Is there a time when yeah. you, you haven't developed and at this point you're going to have to pay a new fee or is this just indefinite? Well, um, when you, I guess you do the subdivision and the plat. At that point in time, uh, the city is, is uh, it, the, the ordinances is, it says that the, they have to connect and, and prepay all those fees as, as once the, the lots are platted and developed. That's not the question. And, um, and, okay. Mayor, um, when, when, when a final plat comes to the city and is approved, uh, the, before the plat is approved, the developer has to submit a letter of credit, uh, pay the PUB, uh, uh, meters, so so once they're paid, well, they're paid. Uh, he well, may, no, but he doesn't have an, on, he doesn't have an indefinite amount of time. What we want to know is how long do they have to build? If for whatever reason, if they don't build within one year, two right, years, two years, years, one year, you know, eighteen months. First of all, in order for them to prepay, they have to be platted. Once they prepay, they have one year to develop. One year. That's, one year. That's the answer I was looking for. So the so the so the what the rumor out there, some of these developers that have prepaid for the next five years, that that's false. If they've already prepaid, that's because they have already been platted. Okay. They now they have it. one year to develop. If, if they, they haven't don't? developed, then they have to pay the new fee. The new fee. Mm -hmm. okay. That's There's already set in stone. That's in writing. That's in writing. So basically, if I understand you correctly, after you've been platted, you have a year to make the payment? Yes, on, all, on the improvements. Okay, and then you have a year after that to make the improvements? That's correct. And if you don't make the improvements, then you're subject to a new fee, correct? Just let me know if that's right. That's why John needed a beer. That's what I understood. The, the improvements have to be built. Okay, uh, what happens if you don't build the improvements? Then are you subject to a new fee? You pay the new uh, rate. You, you, you pay for the difference. You pay the new rate. Yeah, but, but the plat stays not in right forever. I mean, we have. And that applies to everybody. That applies to everybody. Nobody's going to get out of that. But I can't do it. Well, I paid, and I, I don't want to pay now because yeah. I've already paid the 278. And, okay. and what I want to know is where do we find that? I mean, you're telling, you folks are telling us. That's, that it, that's a it exists. I want to know where do I go to read it? Is it is it an ordinance? Is it is it a resolution? What is it? Yeah, that's a PUB service policy. Well, we need, I'm, we asking, I'm asking PUB. 
Yeah. I want to read and write. Policy, the, the ordinance on uh, the impact fee does not describe that. You know where he's coming from is that some of the yeah. de smaller developers have come up to us like, man, wh what, are, what are these bigger developers? They've already prepaid for the next five years. They, they can sit on their land for five, six years or 10 years until they decide to, to build and they're going to pay the 280 fee. Is that true or not? It, 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 yeah. If you don't know the, the answer, the then you don't know the answer. Well, the ordinance does not require that. It's a PUB policy that they have that the board approved. Oh, you have that oh. in writing? We, yes. And Are there waivers to that policy? Excuse me? Are there waivers to that policy? No. If it's I come in and I say, policy? well, hey, I, I bought 100 lots and I've already paid, prepaid, will you give me a waiver so that I don't have to do that because I can't build for two years? No, Is there a, a procedure for doing that? We have it in writing. Okay. You, can you provide that for us by the next yes, meeting? Yes, we don't have it with us at this time. Okay, let me take you back, Mr. Farias, to the uh, 2,133 uh, fee that, that was adopted and then rescinded. Your assumptions are pretty safe and good assumptions because uh, I want to make sure everybody understands this, because any applicant who subdivided and got the service would have paid, otherwise they can't get the service. You can't get connected. That's correct. So, I mean, uh, to, to think or to assume that the number there, 6455000 of losses, is not a good number, is erroneous, because it is a good number based on the connections that you would not have gotten if you don't pay. Well, that's a budgeted number based on that dollar, but it, it, the, the assumption is that it, uh, it's a budget, right? And the idea is, is well, that how many of those would have paid that dollar amount, we just don't know. Well, the, 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 it's safe to assume that the majority would have paid it with the exception of one or, or two out of, the, out, of the, out, of the, out of the system that doesn't end up connecting for whatever right. reason. Right, and, and that is the reason why yeah. I wanted to highlight how much were coming right. from developers and one, how many were coming from normal walking and customers it, and into the... the fee field. of 3000 three um, I think it was 3080 that was recommended last time, uh, the numbers would have been even higher. Okay, please continue. Well, uh, I, that it was, it basically was is my presentation. Uh, well, is Mr. The Farias, let me say this. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I disagree with, with that. Again, as you keep alluding to, we are talking about assumptions. It's not the reality. It's not fact-finding. It, this is, again, we assume that if they connected, You'd have the 64.55. Right. So that's, that's I mean, correct. we can go we can go around in circles all day to say that this would have been this would have been what we what we've lost. Right. We don't know. No, you are actually correct, and that's the past. That's yeah. Where, right. You know, right now we're here today. We can't do anything with the past. Right. We're here today, and all that I'm saying is that the only thing that I wanted to mm -hmm. highlight there is how many could have come from developers and could have come from non-developers. Right. And you can see really the percentages from a high growth period right. going into a low growth period. And you can see the percentage change of how many people are coming in right now at, into PUB. But, I'm sorry, Arturo, what we do know for reality is this. When that amount was lowered back to a 280, the majority of our developers came and used that grace period to pay for their pay for their. Prepay. No. They, they, well, they went and, and took existing lots that they had, and they paid for their impact fee at 280. And now we're here to visit it and to establish, but yet what the subdivisions and the lots that we needed back then at the 2400 or 2100 are gone. They've already been paid at 280. And according to staff, it's per policy, so they've already been platted. In essence, you are correct. We have lost that money because if those subdivisions go up in the future, they've already platted and they've already paid their 280. We're not going to be if we were to go today at the maximum <laughs> amount of 3400. We're not going to see any of it from that from those from those subdivisions because they've already paid their 280. That's a and, safe and I'm talking about the big boys. The big boys have already gone well, and paid their 280. There's a difference between platting and construction, and construction because you actually have to complete the connection in order to keep the, the 280 fee, right? Otherwise, you're going to lose that after a year, and then you're going to have to come back and pay it. So those people who weren't able to complete their subdivisions, well, 
they're still on the hook, and they would have they paid the 280, which we get as a windfall, right. and whatever new amount because they haven't been able to complete it will be the new impact fee that they would have to pay, right? Right. Okay. And, and I guess do we know, have any numbers or any idea? From what staff? The, I, 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 I think I think staff I think staff can get a, a good number because there are so many lots that are and, and uh, we have some developers here. They can tell you how many lots that that are on the market. I mean, uh, from their from their own stock. Well, I Chacon guess the owns I have like a uh, hundred something lots there in West Lake. There, mm. they're already subdivided and they're paid for and, and they're connected. Right. Ex except uh, they're 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 empty because they haven't sold. But I mean, they've already been platted and, and everything else, permitted and everything else, to where it's part of that six million four hundred fifty five. The point? market's flooded with empty lots. That are ready to, to be, for a house to be built on, it. and I nobody can deny that. So the six million is a good assumption. Well, again, we can go over this. You know, we can keep going all day on that. Do we know at what point the clock started on those developer properties that have yet to be constructed? Do we know? Back in 06, back in 07, at what point everybody paid for their, you know, paid their connection fees? Yet to this day, they still haven't developed, and that's over the year now. That rule, the, the, the rule, the new rule needs to apply to them. Do we know what those numbers are? No, I, I, I don't have that number. <clears throat> Does so anybody keep an eye on, on those that have gone past the 100 days? Yeah, we don't know. That have gone beyond a year. I mean, because if we have a policy, then I would think, well, somebody needs to maintain it. Somebody needs to review it. Yeah. Let, let me, let me uh, correct that. Uh, Commissioner, under the model rules, the letter of credit is good for a year. For a year, 12 months. And, 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 it, and they have two years to renew it. So, so if, if a subdivision, the developer can't, doesn't build his lots, he, and the year runs out, he needs to renew the letter of credit. But he's grandfathered into that same fee. The model rules talk about the letter of credit. doesn't talk about what fee he's paying. So, so he's grandfathered into whatever fee, whatever ordinance is in place. Okay, well then that just changes the whole what you just told me. <laughs> that just conflicts with what they're telling yeah, me. Yeah, and, and, and the so wh which is it? Because it needs to be consistent. It's, it's what I'm telling you because their policy is related to the model rules. I mean, that's the governing state statute. So the so 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 what I'm telling you is that the state statute says, and and the state monitors. I mean, they come and review our plans, and and the letters of credit to make it's all preventing of colonials. Make sure that the letter of credit is in place until the developer finishes and, and PUB accepts that plat. And then it becomes the, the right-of-ways, the, the water lines all become public. So that letter of credit has to be in place. So what I'm telling you is a fact. The, the fee is grandfathered. For how long? For, for the rest? For the rest. For 10 years. Right, right because that's, that's the ordinance in place. I mean, you can't, you can't charge people... When when they when they when they develop a, a, a subdivision, their cash flow, they they, they know, you, know how much money they're going to make, and then in the middle well of then, the extreme, you don't okay, change. Okay, hold on a second. So then, if their policy is not to grandfather, and you're saying the model rules which control your operations and planning basically conflict, how do we get those to be consistent? I, so I think that, I think they are consistent. We, uh, well, the, she's telling me that after a year, if they don't connect, that they have to pay a new impact fee. And you're telling me they're, they're grandfathered yeah. into the old impact fee. Yeah. And I sure don't want to be in a situation where we've got people who are paying different fees and have essentially, uh, you know, bought yeah, out uh, of... I'm talking from my side. I do not know what their policy is. You know for a fact what their policy is. And be honest with me. Well, she, she mentioned that... I'm asking you, do you know for sure about what their policy says. I do if not you know don't know, you sure. don't know. If you don't know, you don't know, because when you hesitate like that, no, no, I know you're not No, but they, the they have to I know, follow... They I know have you're to not... They have don't to know follow, the answer. They have to follow the model rules. If they're not following the model rules, then their policy, I mean, is void. And, and I think okay. on another thing, on a letter of credit, usually the small developer or yeah, the medium-sized developer, like you know, when you have a letter of credit facility used okay. at a bank to go ahead and finance a subdivision, usually the bank, you know, makes sure that, that they, they, the, the clock starts ticking and the letter of credit, the amount of the letter of credit has to do with the infrastructure development of that subdivision and to do with water, 
and wastewater development, all that cost. And so once the city of Brownsville gets that letter of credit, that's cash. If the development does not get done, then the city of Brownsville, all they have to do is cash in that letter of credit, and you can finish the development. But if, if the big developers, if they finance themselves and they have a cash deposit uh, supporting the letter of credit, then they can continue extending it. But most developers that finance, basically the bankers are, they're ticking. They have a lien on the deed of trust. And on top of that, they have a letter of credit on the deed of trust. They're almost double financing on that particular project. So they, the banker wants to make sure that the development gets done. There's no waiting and seeing other than if the developer is very strong and he can handle the financing himself. Does your bank deal with a lot of these developers? I'm not in the banking business anymore, but I did several development loans. Yeah, for who, you, who were you with? I was with uh, IBC, Lone Star National Bank, and Falcon International Bank. So you know how it works. I know how the mechanism works. Can compared to other communities, yeah. how other communities looked at the way that we safeguard the city, they always say, wow, y'all are requiring a letter credit for infrastructure development. That's like double securement because not only do you have a deed of trust, but you also have a letter of credit, and that's cash. So, I mean, the pressure is on the developer to, to develop it, and they're not going to go ahead and play this game as to am I going to finish it or not. Well, and if let's say they don't finish it, then the city keeps the fee, PUB keeps the, the fee from this. Well, ideally, if the developer decides not to finish it for whatever reason... Well, I mean, we've got... Well, th there's the reason. I mean, we're 2009, and we've got 172 versus... Yeah, but the, the actual developer has a lot of money invested yeah, in the project. They're purchasing the land. They've got, they, they're putting 25% cash in the deal. This is not... Uh, the fee is small compared to the equity injection that a developer has to put in. So if it's a million-dollar project and normally the developer has to put in 250000 cash, you know, I mean, they've got a lot of equity into the deal, and I don't think that the fee is the primary reason for them not finishing. They may carry through even if they don't have the purchases. Right. Any other questions? Uh, in, in finishing, I just want to say that, uh, you know, we're blessed to have PUB. Uh, it, it's a combined utility system of electric, water and wastewater, and the two systems that are the hardest to manage is, manage is the water and wastewater. Those are the ones that don't make money. We, we're trying to just keep up with whatever rates are coming in to try to do capital improvement. So in the big scheme of things, we're financing $23 million out of hopefully a budgeted revenue that comes <laughs> from impact fee. The capital improvement plan calls for $212 million. That's 11% of a 10-year budget. I think people need to realize that the impact fee and whatever budget numbers that we can collect from impact fee, that's hopefully will help relieve some pressure on the ratepayers. But 90% of the rest of the capital improvements are going to be financed through, through, through rates. Through rates. And so, you know, I think that ideally, you know, as a PUB board member, when I go up to New York and look at revenue bonds and financing our capital improvements, yes, we get brownie points and we have uh, impact fees. You know, that's another source of income coming in. <clears throat> but the, the main thing is what are your revenues that are being generated from the rate payers to pay for this capital improvements? So if you take $23 million out of the $212 million budget over a 10-year period at a 2% growth, which is pretty darn conservative, you're talking about a very conservative model, then the ideally if whatever monies you can get from impact fees will help finance some of it, but the rest will come from the rate payers. That's the bottom line. And so you have $107 million that are, 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 are repair and renewal of a, or an existing system, uh, wastewater uh, management in Brownsville is extremely complicated. You, you know, we have a bunch of lift stations, and so it's complicated. And so ideally, you know, all we're trying to do is uh, the, the impact fee is another way of generating income to help support some of the, the, the costs involved having to do with growth and development. But is, there growth and development today, excuse me, is there anybody here today from PUB that can talk about the increase how the increase in the impact fee would affect the ratepayer 
because everybody I've heard talk has said that the rates are going to go up, and so I'd like to know what, what that margin is going to be. Well, ideally, yes. Uh, I mean, we have Leandro Garcia that, that can come in and talk about that, but in, in, in the analysis that we've done is that really where, where the actual increase is not going to come from, from that portion of it. It's going to come from the rest of the capital improvement plans. Well, you've got to maintain what you built. Yeah, I mean, Which if you take $212 million, subtract $23 million from there, that's, you know, that's the big vehicle yeah. that you're buying, and you've got to finance that. And that's where the revenue's got to come in to pay for the rate. Let me give you an example. If, if, if all the rate payers are, like, being employed and you have a salary, well, 90% of your salary needs to be paying for all your needs and, and what you have out there. The other 10% of salary might come from consulting fees, additional money that you make out there to pay for additional needs. And that's the same thing that we're, we're saying here. So the consulting fees might go up, might go down. We really don't know what's going to happen once you adopt that, that new fee. And if we generate some fee income off of that, great. But the actual reality of this all is that we have $212 million in capital improvements over the next 10 years. We've got to pay for it somehow or another. And it's not all going to come from impact fees. Do you know if Mr. Brugiak has found out any more information about the, uh, the request for the stimulus package? I think there was over a billion dollars that was sent to Texas or is going to be sent to Texas. We were up there testifying in front of the Senate, Mr. Brugiak and myself. Uh, we have $670 million that have been uh, submitted uh, for the stimulus money. Uh, we went ahead and Representative René Oliveira and Senator Lucio introduced two bills in, in, the, in the Senate so that way we could go ahead and have a design bill concept uh, speeding up the process from September to, ju to June, and ideally so that way we can have shovel-ready programs in place, so that way once the money comes into the state, and I understand there's maybe a billion dollars, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure, but there might be a billion, $1 billion that comes in for infrastructure, for water and wastewater, and what ideally is that hopefully we can get some grant money out of there, and that would be the best thing that, we, that could happen to Brownsville if we could get some grant money out of there. So uh, Mr. Bruzek, myself, we testified in front of the committee, and it looks positive that we can go ahead and get approved as a design bill in June, so that way we have shovel-ready uh, projects on board so that we're ready to receive some of that stimulus money that's going to get... Uh, when would, what would, uh, I know you said June right now as far as getting the bill in, but when would we have any idea if, if we're actually going to get some of those funds? Well, I understand, and, and I don't know if anybody here knows any, uh, but I, from what I understand, they're about ready to release information as to uh, projects that are on the, on the short list. I, that's what Is that I 30 know. days, 90 days? You don't know? I don't know. 30 days, I think. Before, before, before you leave, uh, Arturo, first of all, I was there where you testified. You did a good job. And, and thank you. But you need to visit also because they're, they're just focusing on the... Uh, on the impact fee right now, but the credit. What would the impact fee have been without the credit, which would have qualified for the impact fee? Please visit that out of the 50 million, uh, 53 million total that qualified for the impact uh, fee. Double the amount. But explain the else, would, it make, would it make a difference to wait to see what we receive from the stimulus package? Uh, you know, it's hard to tell what's going to happen, uh, Commissioner Cisneros, because, I mean, th everything's you could think you're going to have something today, and then, you know, we, we really don't know. So it's going to take another several months. But the impact fee would have been over $6,000, okay? Right now, that's what we'd be talking about. If we had not given... $53 million having to do with... If we had not given... It is, it actually, is roughly double, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so actually Boy, we're yeah. already helping the developers by giving a credit of over $30 million. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you elaborate on that so people understand that, you know, we, sure, we, we are doing everything we can to help the developers. Well, Out of we, the $212 million, okay, they're paying a minuscule sum with this proposed 3486 compared to the ratepayers. But they would have paid twice as much if the credits had not been given. And that is true. We took, we roughly cut the impact fee, proposed impact fee in half. Because, uh, as we mentioned last week, we took recognizing what's happening right now in the economy, recognizing we don't have a lump sum of cash sitting there to start some of these projects to meet the growth. We took the first $30 million issue and went ahead and placed that under rates instead of expecting it to be paid for impact fees. 
get the project started off. Yes, sir. So the rate payers are already going to subsidize again the developers by half of that. By half of that, yes, sir, for the 10-year well, period. But, well, I thought we were but, supposed to help the rate payer. And, and when you – so when you say you were helping the developer, well, I thought we were supposed to help the rate payer. Um, when you – when you mention that that you know we took 30 million out of it and you know we're, we're trying to help somebody, it doesn't it doesn't seem like we're trying to help anybody. It seems that the logical thing was you have this downward trend of of growth, and so it makes sense. Well, why would we try to do all these things when we know the growth is not there and well, the demand and the impact mm -hmm. on the infrastructure isn't there? Of course, yeah, take it out. Re, I mean, revisit. You know, reevaluate that process. So, so when you come up and he's asking you, you know what, we're helping developers. Well, it's not supposed to be about developers. It's supposed to be about the rate payers. And two, it's because of the recession that we are in. And again, it makes the most logical sense to take away that big chunk that we know we don't, we don't need and we don't have. It, it, it helps the developers, but that was not the goal. Richard, uh, your name is Richard, right? Yes, sir. Richard, talk to him. With that $30 million. PUP is already not in compliance with the sewer plan. Okay, we're out of compliance. We're over 80 percent capacity. By state That's law, by state law, we're supposed to already be building right. another sewer plan. Okay, in anticipation of the growth, the 30 million is going to be to help the developers by building the additional new plant for the new growth. Okay, that the ratepayers are financing for that growth. Is that not true? That is true. Yes, sir. They did, but it, it were projects that needed to be done. The, the rate, the, you know, out of the 212 million that I'm saying, the 53 million that could have actually been directly connected to the rate to the developers, it would have been over six thousand dollars per unit on the average. Yes, sir, that's true. We're still even bending backwards and taking even more of the lion's share and putting in the rate pairs. But if we don't do this, the plant doesn't get built, one, and we have no growth. Okay. Two, okay, if we if we don't adopt the maximum rate, not only are we the, the scale's already lopsided with, with, with the rate payer absorbing the majority cost, that insignificant amount that we're asking from the rate from the developers is gonna compound the rates to where then it's gonna be so lopsided that you're going to see huge rate increases when we can do small increases and get the $212 million done, the capital improvements done, maintenance and everything for the next 10 years. Am I right? Yes, sir. That's true. That's what we want to do. We want to make it to where it's, we're not killing growth and we're also helping the developers stay in business, but they got to share some part of the burden. Not, not, it's not fair to put it all on the rate payer. Mr. Farias, that is the purpose of the question. impact fee. But what we're looking at today, where we're at today, the majority of the people that are going in are the non-developer. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The small business, the, the residential customer. Is that correct? Yes. So by saying the high impact fee, what are we doing to them? What are we doing to the little guy? By well, setting it, the maximum allowable amount. It, it, it's, it's costing them the difference, right? And ideally, you know, they're going to have to come up with the cash and, and either they can get financing or, or, you know, do something in that arena. Is financing wide open today? I'm sorry? Is, Is fin financing wide open today? <laughs> it's a lot more difficult today. Uh, you, you, as you all well know what happened to the housing market, that credit financing and, and subprime loans uh, did allow the housing market to, to boom. And now credit facilities on houses is a lot more <coughs> difficult. They have to have, they have to verify their income source. Credit scores have to be at a certain level, and and for them to qualify for a mortgage. So as and before, and that's not to say that it was <coughs> bad in, in yeah. having people have ability to own their own home, because that brought in more tax money to the city. Tax valuations went up, uh, so you know all of those are money was made in other areas other than are, are, are were purchasing. Right? So we I, I, I guess my concern uh, is that we need to hold on, Mayor. Mr. Well, I guess my concern is that we got to continue to uh, the city depends on the on the sales tax and and residential. 
tax. So, I mean, uh, I mean, not just a commercial tax. And um, what I don't want to do is already put a bigger hit on an already hard hit e economy. Does that does that make sense? You know, what I mean, we're going through tough times right now, and I keep thinking of I really don't want to hurt the small guy that has to try and start 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 a business or they're building their home and they got to, if you're saying that the typical user profile is a three quarter inch is that correct that's correct what, that's and what most everybody is using that's a bigger right. bigger number that's who we'd be affecting the most and and and, and really commissioner cisneros this is a a 10-year plan mm -hmm. so today you know this year i mean we're you know <laughs> Uh, a very deep economic recession, and hopefully, with everything that's going on, we're gonna that we're, get we'll go ahead and get out of it. Sure. I don't know how long that's going to take. That that is the unknown. I guess that's my concern. That's the unknown, <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 it, but it is a very conservative plan. You have two percent growth over the next ten years, and the requirements on the PUB are going to be two hundred and twelve million dollars for the next two. Ten years at two percent growth, so that's a very conservative number, and it just tells you how much money we need for capital improvements. And part of that, the 23 million or the 53 million, however you want to look at it, is going to be coming from impact fees. How much we can generate from that avenue, we don't know, Mr. Perez. But that impact fee is a one-time pass-through fee to the end consumer. If, you know, that, that's one time. The alternative is, if we don't do this, we pass that fee on to all the, the ratepayers of the citizens of Browns. They all have to pay for it. So either, you, either, either that fee is collected by the entrepreneur who, who takes a risk and makes money, he's there to make money, and passes it on to the end consumer, which is a buyer, okay? Or he's on corporate welfare from the PUB ratepayers. Who uh, have to pay for his development and, and, for that and, portion of the development? And that's correct. Uh, <coughs> uh, right now, we do have a, a, a Leandro Garcia has a presentation on rates and how this can affect rates. So, uh, I mean, unless somebody else has other questions for me, uh, I, I finished my Thank you very presentation. Much. I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the Commission, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, my name is Dick O'Neill. I'm uh, an attorney and special counsel to PUV with the law firm of Davidson and Troilo in San Antonio. I've met many of you before, and uh, we appreciate the ability to serve. Um, I wanted to try to be responsive uh, with regard to the question about uh, a developer that would have paid for uh, a particular impact fee <laughs> and then have the development not play out, if you would, completely. There's a specific section in the uh, impact fee statute. It's section 395.017. And it says, after assessment of the impact fees attributable to the new development, the new development, or execution of an agreement for payment of the impact fees, additional impact fees or increases in fees may not be assessed against the track for any reason unless the number of service units to be developed on the track increases. In the event of the increase in the number of service units, naturally the impact fees to be imposed uh, are limited only to the delta or the amount attributable to the additional service units. As, as many of you know, what happens sometimes, a developer will go into a <coughs> an area wanting to develop initially with single-family residential and maybe he'll fall upon hard times and maybe the conducive zoning in that area would support say multifamily residential and what happens sometimes is their their development plan changes and so what would happen in that instance obviously they'd be switching from single family residential to multifamily assuming that all the zoning could be done and the appropriate infrastructure could be added and naturally they would be paying the difference if they added service units by putting more people on the same amount of property, they would pay a differential from what they paid initially in the impact fee versus what they would ultimately pay by getting a larger meter. Now, what can also happen is an absolute uh, default, in effect, uh, in that, you know, many times a developer will come in with a preliminary overall area development plan, good intentions, come in, pay the padding uh, fees, uh, and things go south 
financially or whatever, and they will in effect be at risk after they apply for their extensions. Many times you can extend from a year to 18 months, as the gentleman had suggested, but eventually they may not get any more extensions, and what starts happening is their, their site improvement payment performance bonds would start being looked at for foreclosure because obviously uh, maybe the city has done some things to accommodate this development and they're not coming through on their end and so you know the city has the city both the city and the PUB would have to look at potentially foreclosing on those site improvement for uh, foreclosure uh, or, uh, performance bonds for sewer water streets sidewalks etc and then you know you're in a default situation where in effect uh, there's sort of a breach of agreement. And at that point, given that there was a breach of agreement, it could theoretically be possible that a new developer would come in later after this uh, particular uh, development failed to develop. And it's my estimation that because of that default scenario, that uh, if there were a new impact fee passed between the first and the second, that the second could be imposed because you're dealing with a whole new set of circumstances. Would you mind giving staff that so they give me a copy of it? Yeah, sure. Well, it's in the state statute, and it's uh, 395.017. And then the, the, there's service policies for both the uh, planning department and the PUB. We just saw some of them online on a handheld <coughs> that uh, basically speak to those points with regard to the potential default. I know that's a little bit legalese and technical, but I wanted to try to clear the situation. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a copy made so you can distribute it to, to the commission. Thank you. Mayor, commis commissioners, uh, my name is Andrew Garcia. I'm the chief financial officer for Brownsville PUB. Welcome I'm going to be back. doing a, a top level uh, uh, overview uh, of the financial, overall financial implications of this CIP plan, the 10 year plan. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some, some rates, projected rate increases. I do want to uh, caution you all that. We, we are in the process of uh, doing a rate study with a consultant, so some of this information will be taken into consideration as a consultant pro uh, makes progress in the rate study, and we'll come later at a later date for, for that presentation. We're not proposing any rate increases today. It's just to give you a, a feel, give you a better pulse as to what the 212 that we're talking about, how that impacts our, our rate payers and PUB's financial uh, resource requirement. One, one question I have is if we don't raise rates, what happens? If we don't raise rates, then uh, my job right here is to, to, to find a way to finance the $212 million that our engineers have, 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 have presented to us. I mean, they, they started with a bigger picture. They scrubbed it. They fine-tuned the projects that are needed, broken between repairs and, and replacements, which are needed items because our system is, is in not some areas subject to Do you to have a breakdown between what is immediately necessary mm -hmm. and what your projected growth would mm -hmm. be? I mean, do you have a, this is my short list of things I need right now to continue to function at the level that we have, and this is where I want to be in, in five years based on a 1%, 2% growth, or 6% growth, so, however so you... Some, some of the scheduling uh, over the 10 years, first, second, third year, is a reflection of what needs to be addressed in the near future. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the bigger uh, items is the Robin Dove plant, $30 million. Uh, plus, so we're, we're addressing that uh, in the very near future. Other projects, there's a long list of projects that can be prioritized. If we don't have rate increases, um, we'll need some level of rate increases, either to cover well, What if we don't want to do rate increases? I'm sorry? What, if, what if we feel we don't want to impose more rates on our, our citizens? Let me tell you what's going to happen. We, well, no, I'd like to hear from him. No, the, the state's going to walk in and manage the utility company because if we don't build that, that sewer plant, if we don't, we're out of compliance already. If we don't, if we don't build that sewer plant, they're going to come in and take it over, and they're going to raise rates. We're, we're, and, and that's, and that's, a, that's a probability. We are pursuing state funding uh, as much as we can. The stimulus is one, one, one avenue. Uh, we do pursue grants from the Texas Water Development Board or small or, or low in, low interest loans. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be before the Texas Water Development Board to receive. 13 million for, for uh, Southmost uh, Water Development uh, improvements for arsenic. Those are going to be zero interest and low interest. So we are pursuing low cost financing, but the free money is, is, may not be there. So we may have to forego 
uh, and defer improvements you know, for, for a few years and then play catch up. Uh, we haven't had a rate increase since 2005. Uh, we were fortunate at 2005 that the rate increase uh, was sufficient to generate revenues along with the growth, with a, with, a, with a healthy growth. We had some carryover bond money. So the financing has been there over the last two, three years to, to address at least the, the, the rehabilitation and, and the need of growth. Um, if we don't have the rate increases, um, we, we're going to have to live within our means. Uh, pursue other grant funding or low interest, low financing, and then uh, uh, do band -aid, uh, the band-aid approach and, well, and, let me and, and hope that we won't subject the system to regulatory. Let me ask you something. With, with all this coming up, and you knew we were going to go through this, PUB decided to go hire 46 employees, pay them salaries and benefits. Wouldn't you have waited to do that to we, see we what have, type sir. of outcome? We have. Or did you already hold on? Or did you already know you already had the funding to be able to, to fund? The to me, everything's hunky-dory over there because you can afford a, to hire 46 employees. I mean, if the city of Brownsville could afford a, to hire 10, we'd be happy. When we hire 46 what? employees at a time when we're an economic downfall. Everybody else is laying off, not giving yeah. raises to I, the... I, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. What are the aspects? Wait to be That's recognized. Correct. One of the aspects. Uh, good point. Let him, let, him, let him speak and wait to be recognized, please. Give him the courtesy. One of the aspects of implementing an effective maintenance system is, is having labor forces out there working the pipes, working the lift stations, whether it's welders, whether it's uh, mechanics. Uh, we did have the board uh, accept a proposal for 44 positions, 42. We have not proceeded with filling only but, but 11, 12, the, the most critical ones. Uh, internally, we, we opted to, to, to let the, the management at least uh, consider the, the critical area. So we're proceeding with, with filling some, but not all. We're deferring the majority of them, recognizing that the revenue, uh, the revenues for now, uh, may not support filling those positions. Uh, we're having to balance reality, the actual revenues coming in, consumption being down to the budget. So. Uh, to answer your question, the, the, the board was receptive in the new positions, but management has opted to, to, to limit those to critical needs. And those critical needs are in the areas of field um, operations where, where the maintenance is critical in electric or water or wastewater. So we're, we're being, we recognize the, 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 the uh, I guess, uh, the times, the, the times and, and are proceeding. In, 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 a, in a very cautious approach, with a very anybody cautious else, approach. Anybody so. has a question? I wanted to just play devil's advocate and ask Let a question. Uh, in essence, by putting into your budget those 40-some employees, in essence, I, don't, I hate to revert back to the, to the cash flow that comes back to the city or within the expenses, you would be, in financial terms, being able to say, well, this money is budgeted here, so therefore this money cannot be touched because I already have it programmed for these 40-some employees. So therefore, not just here or in, any, in, in case of any kind of money transfer, you are in essence have on budget already for 40-some employees, even though you don't use them, correct? Right, but, but to, to build on your question, those positions do not, affect, speak. do not affect the city transfer. Commissioner Trani? Mm -hmm. Those positions do not affect the city transfer. Okay. And we take the gross revenues, 10%. And then, and then we cover all in it. But also at the same time, there's two points that need to be made. You're taking a costless approach because the, the revenues are coming down right now. Correct. So, yes, we budgeted, but knowing that the revenues are coming down, it would be silly and foolish to hire knowing that our, we may have a shortfall or less than expected. One. Two, the reason that 44 employees were authorized is because the system, I don't want to use the word neglect, but the system for a long period of time has not uh, been maintained as it should. We've been doing band-aid approach to, to the lines and stuff like that. So the plan was that was presented to me for the 44 new employees was a lot of the maintenance that needs to be done that have been deferred for long periods of time. Am I right? That's correct. As a matter of fact, 22 of the 44 We're taking a cautious were approach now because of the downturn of the... 22 and the, uh, the 44 work, uh, water my, and wastewater. Field. My apologies. I didn't mean to come across as, as taking a cheap shot. I just, just for clarification. So. 
Okay. Somebody on, else wants to ask something? Okay. okay. Uh, Leandro, what about... Um, Commissioner what about, Camarillo. Thank you, Mayor. What about waste? Um, the rates? No, waste. Do you think we've, we, we waste at PUB? Are we purchasing things that we don't need to purchase? Have we looked at caps within our departments and, and budgets that it might have been... Have we, has there been any percentage cuts for departments, for supplies, for travel, for, you know, things that the PUB normally would do now no longer does? Has that affected our departments? We, we have uh, implemented some, some uh, cost containment or some, some, some more frugal approach to, to purchasing. Uh, we, we do ask questions uh, on every contract. Are we getting the best price? Uh, yeah, that we look at reductions based on the economy that we, are, that we know of, uh, uh, contractor labor, uh, concrete uh, cost and such, to where we're actually uh, knowing what the environment we're in, that we can uh, achieve cost savings based on on, on the, the willingness of vendors to reduce cost. Uh, so so we, do, we are benefiting, we are looking at, at ways to, to maintain cost within budget and even, not, not just because you have a budget, but within reasonable amounts. Yes. What about within the departments? At department departments, uh, we do look at departments and assess uh, any, any budget variance, unfavorable, favorable. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the unfavorable variances often ex uh, come in areas that are critical, you know, they're experiencing higher uh, chemical needs or higher uh, material needs to, to do road work after, after a, a major project, whatever, maintenance stuff, and it's something that we can't avoid in some cases, but uh, we do monitor on a monthly basis and present to the board uh, reports that show budget to actual variances, and, and, and we, we do kind of uh, address them if we need to. And you might want to point out, Mr. Garcia, is that we expanded our audit uh, department to look at each department and continuously monitor for such things as waste. Uh, so I think PUB is doing what it can. Uh, there's no perfect uh, uh, system, but we're doing our part to monitor that. But I think uh, we're getting off track here because right One here, question, right here uh, Commissioner, let me I recognize you. Right now I'm talking. Right now we're talking about water and wastewater and historically water and wastewater is not a, a, a department that makes money. Uh, we're all trying to do is, uh, you know, try to keep the rates down by adopting a, an impact fee that is fair and that's something that uh, fosters growth and at the same time uh, keep, helps us uh, keep the, the, the rates down to a minimum. Uh, the choices are very clear. Either we raise rates to, to cover the 23 million if we don't do nothing, okay? Okay. Or uh, uh, cut development, okay? And if we cut development, <coughs> then you're talking about cutting out the 53 million total, not just the 23 million, because then we can't have rates. You know, we don't want to raise rates just for the rate payers to pay for a new sewer plant for future expansion if the developers are not going to pay their share of the 23 million for the future growth. So and then you will, you will have to do with, without the sewer plant, and you do run the risk of the state coming in here and taking control of, over our system, or adopt a fair uh, uh, impact fee that allows both, building, building the uh, sewer plant, doing the de uh, allowing uh, the infrastructure to, to allow development, and keep rates down. Is that right? Okay. I'll proceed. Or well, no, I want to. I want to ask one more question. We'll get back to the impact. If you don't, I'm not trying to get away from it. We, we will. One more question because I think is when we grill the city and we tell Pete and you know what are we doing within city before we you know look at increasing property tax or anything like that. Well, I'm doing the same for PUB. So that's where the my line of questioning goes. Do we spend more on outsourcing than things we can do within PUB? On the, on the capital side, yes. On the O&M side, uh, we, we do a lot of internal work. We have uh, labor forces that, that can handle the daily maintenance, daily um, responses to, to, to electric water or wastewater issues. Yes. And do we know how to measure whether that's efficient or not? Whether it's efficient? Yes. In-house and the outsourcing of work. Yeah, we're, uh, we, we look at the resources and, 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 and the, the, the work involved, uh, you know, if there's overtime <coughs> needed, you know, the, the, the type of the work that's done. Change orders. We, we have uh, performance measures, uh, uh, change orders, if, if, you, if, if you may. But like uh, the mayor mentioned, we do have a, an internal auditor that's, that is focusing more on, on performance uh, uh, by, by departments. Uh, they're not only, you know, in the past they used to suggest uh, uh, areas to cut, 
now uh, he may suggest there is to, to invest in mm -hmm. tools, equipment right. to improve efficiencies, uh, better use of technology, better uh, uh, even adding positions to address the real customer needs. So uh, the reports we're getting are more comprehensive and addressing management and performance issues of, of the services we deliver. I mean, we can always cut back on services, but to, to, to maintain the expected standard, right. we, we really do have to invest in tools, equipment, and resources. When is the next report out on your audit? Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get a schedule on that. Uh, we have, the, the auditor has released uh, at least half a dozen in, in the last uh, uh, six months, uh, little sections or departments. Okay. Uh, and, and they have helped mm -hmm. management and, and, and zero in on areas of concern, uh, and we've reacted. You know, if we need to address this weakness here, or find a way to improve it and, and, and keep the, cast, the customer uh, response uh, within, within reasonable turnaround times, and we, we have done that, yes. Okay, thank you, Leandro. Mr. Leandro, last, last time we met here, I was, John Bruggier, I talked to him. It's, I wish he was here, but he's not. But I asked him, I go, what's, is PUB gonna recommend a number to help the city commission? And he goes, we are. I go, well, what's the number? He goes, well, what's, what's the impact fee that we're proposing? It's 34, he goes, and that's the number. Does city staff back that statement up? I mean, are you all with what he's saying as far as after all these studies, this is what the number should be to help balance what the developers and the, tax and the rate payers are, 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 are going through? The, the, the maximum allowable just give me a straight answer. Equitable. What's yeah, equitable? Straight if I may, the maximum allowable is one resource in the big scheme of things. Yes, it would be beneficial for PUB to realize revenues at this level. PUB and the rate payers. And, is there and the rate payers. Is there that PUB would actually, would actually get revenue at that level based on the current economy? In the immediate near future, perhaps not. In the, in the long scheme of things, 10-year, uh, we, we don't know if it's going to turn around next year, the, the year after. Uh, we're hoping that it does. We're hoping that all of the... No. I'm sorry? It's a wish list. It's, well, no, no, it, no, it's no. a list that will prepare us for the anticipated growth under certain economic conditions, the 2% growth. what those economic conditions are at this point. And, and at this point, 2% is conservative, but nonetheless, it, it's there and it'll, it'll need the infrastructure you know, the, everybody talks about the recession and everybody talks about the economy being so bad. The impact fee has nothing to do with that because the impact fee for 21 years has been at $280 per lot for Brownsville. Okay? So uh, let, let's, let's move on and talk about something else. Now, I have here a Texas impact fee summary. Are you going to talk in your presentation, are you going to talk about uh, Allen, Texas, uh, Harlingen, Texas? No, but, but we can cover that after, after the presentation. Because I am interested. I have in one more question. Does anybody finish? Are you finished, Commissioner? Commissioner yeah, finished? Yes, I am. Commissioner. Uh, these capital, um, these impact fees, do they go toward pure capital improvements, or do you use some of this money to pay administrative costs? Mm -hmm. No, no. Only all this capital goes to capital improvement. Only capital we improvement. We can't, no, nope, y'all can't touch it or manipulate it. They're deposited it. in separate accounts, uh, spent only on capital projects. That's a law. That's a law. It's all prescribed in 395, and we have to buy it. I have a question, if I may. Commissioner uh, uh, Tranny. Hello. Uh, the question I have, and at some point in this presentation, you're going to get to this is the increase in impact fee, and this is the proposed rate increase by PUB, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and we're stalling that, aren't we? Yes. Okay. So I can proceed. Please. Okay. Okay. But uh, before you go, the, 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 uh, the, the wish list is not a wish list because without this plan, we can't go get financing. Without this plan, we can't accommodate growth we would have to be reacting to it. So this is not a wish list. This is a plan of actual identifiable needs to meet the projected growth based on the experts and the land use study that was put together. Is that right? 
It, it, it's a plan that, that has culminated after a long process through kayak, a lot of input, developers, you know, whoever was there. And it's, it's a plan that at this point uh, is, is there to meet under certain assumptions what do we expect growth. If we don't have the revenues, we won't do it. You know, simple as that, you know. Or, or, and, and we may subject the system to regulatory uh, oversight, but, you know, that will cross that bridge. And we, we wouldn't be, man, and we wouldn't be where we are if the impact fee had been increased 21 years ago or 20 years ago, even, even five years ago. You know, even two years ago when it went to 2133, that would have made a difference. Okay? Am I, am I, am I right or wrong? You're right. You're, okay. you're right, but it's, okay. it's history. It, it's know, hi I know it, that. I, it, it, it is history. We yeah, make absolutely. A we, got, we have to make a decision. We can no longer, for four years, we've been uh, trying to avoid it. We've got to deal with it. I'd like to hear about the rates. Okay. Let's talk about the anything. rates. That's, I think, something that we need to be talking about. <laughs> What did I push? I'm with Charlie, no, no rate increase. I'm, sorry. Huh? I'm okay. with you, no rate increase. Well, I'm going to start here with the big picture again. Uh, the, the plan, the 10 year plan that uh, TCB, Black and Beach, and the Kayak uh, uh, studied for quite a while uh, totaled to 212 million 777.50. Up front, they did isolate or, or categorize the nature of the projects. 100 and 5,287,750 to the left, or 50%, uh, is attributable to renewal and replacement projects. That is to address problems with the existing infrastructure. That, some of that has to be done and has been scheduled over the 10 years based on some type of immediate need or priority. The, the balance uh, was then broken down, or the remaining, into capacity related. Of that capacity related, the bottom right, uh, the 53 million 994.24, was beyond the 10-year period. I think that was discussed with Black Beach last last week, and not not recoverable through impact fees. The remaining 53 million 48.976, the top blue, was what we or Black and Beach categorized as recoverable cost growth-related CIPs. We talked about the 30 million credit. Taking 30 million out of that 53 million leaves 23 million as, as what we would anticipate recouping from the impact fee at whatever level is determined by the commission. That 23 million uh, results in 11 percent of the total 212 million. Uh, uh, the balance of 189 million is 89 percent. That 53 million that was growth related, 30 million is now recoverable. Uh, through as a credit through rates, and 23 million 48.976 or 44 percent is what is anticipated out of impact fees. To cover the the annual cash flow construction requirements here, uh, just to give you a feel here, Leandro, I'm sorry. Going back to the the 40, the 40, 50, the 44 and 56. Who? I mean, wh why is it determined 56, 44? That is just that one piece of the puzzle, the 53, the top right blue. So that top right blue, 30, 30 million is, is 56 and 23. No, I understand. Now, when we talked about the 395 and imposing the impact fee, there, were, there was always saying, well, 33% or 35% gets, gets paid through, the, through development and the remainder gets paid through the rate pay. Is that correct? I'm not sure of those percentages. That was talked, that was, that was talked uh, at the last commission meeting. And what I want to know is how did we determine, because 395 doesn't say, state your developer will pay X percentage and, your, and, the, and, the, and, and then Y is done through rate pair. So who and how did we come up with that percentage? Because the, the, it wasn't the, a 50-50. Those, those percentages are a result of, of whatever <coughs> uh, scenario or latest calculation is. And, and before we had a different uh, scenario because the whole 53 before the credit was impact fee mm -hmm. uh, earmarked. From because again, the that has changed. Right. So, but the 395 doesn't tell us 50% developer, 50% rate pair. It doesn't say that at all. No, it doesn't. It, it does provide some guidance as to how to approach in <coughs> providing some, some, some adjustments, if you may, credits or, or add ins for financing costs or credits for. 
uh, under certain circumstances, but no, there's no 50-50 automatic. And the same thing goes on, on page 28 of the report, uh, the 4.0 maximum impact fee calculation. It states on the bottom that due to various policy considerations which are not undertaken in this report, the actual adopted impact fees may be lower than the maximum allowable fee calculated. Correct? And that is correct. That is, that is at the... At so the we keep talking about the maximum allowable, but yet the 395 states that... Yeah, you may have an allowable, the, the maximum allowable, but that's it's not, not a that, that's not. That's just a result of the calculation of all the assumptions and, and compliance with 395. What it said at is at, at the wishes of the commission. But that's based on the plan. <clears throat> the maximum allowable is based on the plan, ten-year plan. If you adopt it as it is, unless you want to cut back projects, you want to cut back growth. Oh. Right. You're taking all the LUA, the any assumptions, the CFP needs, everything put together, <clears throat> black and beach calculated. The, the three, the, the maximum level. If some of those vary, you know, if some of them are variable, then it changes the formula. It's a maximum allowable, but it's, but it's not a recommended. Correct. Okay. Annual uh, construction requirements, uh, if you can see uh, here at the bottom, uh, we have the, the annual amounts that are required uh, based on the 212. Uh, here restating but year by year, uh, the, the blue part is a renewal and replacement. So these are needs that uh, we will need to finance to maintain our system. The 30 million here is, is what we're, um, what Black and Beach recommended be financed through, through debt supported with ratepayer it, for, for critical projects such as the Robindale Wastewater Treatment Plan, recognizing that collection of impact fees or substantial levels of impact fees may not occur into the third or fourth year. So this will show uh, how we uh, have scheduled the 30 million and then how the yellow here are the, the remaining 23 million over the remaining 10-year uh, uh, period. And then uh, this part here is what was eligible capacity related, I mean ineligible capacity related, that is also to be financed with uh, ratepayer debt service uh, funded approach. This just gives you the, 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 the little pieces on an annual basis of the, the requirements for, for, the, for the project type. This graph here takes only the 53 million capacity related and compares the annual requirements of that 53 million to the collections level, it's some very simplified, even out at 34.86 or the maximum allowable, we would collect 4,200,000 every year. At 75%, we would collect 3.1 million every year, and at 50%, 2.1 million. If I was to approach this plan from a pay-as-you-go, I only do the projects as I collect the money then I would not be able to, to fund some of the projects uh, at this level or at this level until I collect a, a significant balance. Uh, we are proposing to fund these projects through debt, short-term debt, and then apply the collective fees to pay out the debt. And that debt would never go into the rate base or hit you know, the rate payers. So... Uh, for those projects? For, for these projects, yes. It would be not, strictly not your other projects. the other projects would be great. Right. 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 Let me right. ask you something. It's not really a wish list. It's it's a list of what these developers are saying they want to do, or it's a trend of what they want to do, or what they have been no. doing. No, that's supplying no. what they've been supplying. No, the the construct the projects. Mm -hmm. Your your list came from PUB, and I don't I don't I don't think it's a wish list. No, no, it's, it's, reality, it's the, it? the, the, our engineers, consulting and engineers, looked at the city as a whole, targeted improvement areas, growth areas. So is it fair to say it's a wish list or is it a, a realistic list? It's a realistic list based on given assumptions, based on the last year's assumptions, based on growth projections, based on, on, on a 10-year outlook, which is, is just based on, assumptions. based on assumptions. If you change the assumptions, everything else changes, just like anything. We, the kayak agreed on a certain set of assumptions just mm -hmm. to be able to move forward. It's a plan, subject to change at the, at the as, real, as reality you know, comes into play. 
So that's why we, we, we keep talking about having a six-month option in the future and this a year. Is why, this is why PUB, at the request of was it the developers, that we have a study and we had another study. We spent half a million dollars on studies. Or 850,000. 850, okay. Wow. Okay. We've had discussions on, so, on what standard assumptions to use, yes, yeah. and, and so, that has been... And, and these people are engineers and they have taken into account all the numbers, the correct numbers that PUB has provided to Black and Beach. Is that correct? That's correct. So it, it's, it's, a true, it's a true study, it's a true report. All the costing, all the needs have been validated with Black and Beach. Uh, they've stamped their report for the seal and, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a plan, like I say. We, we could, Thank you. We could uh, live the plan or, or have to adjust it as, as reality it's, takes it's in. It's a justifiable... Matt, it's a justifiable Matt, Matt, we hired experts and the expert came up, we're working with PUP and the city planning department and the developers and they came out with this plan. Uh, Mayor, Commissioner Camarillo. I, you know, I, I don't think anybody's uh, faulting the plan or, you know, the, the, the scope of work that was provided by PUB to come up with, with, the, um, with the figures. I think what, what needs to be targeted is, as we look at 2010 and 2011, is that, I mean, look at the state in which we are in. I mean, granted, all of us in every household can say, this is what I need, and the needs are obviously very greater than what we, what we can produce. How do we go about taking care of those needs that are that are, are obviously make the most impact on our on our household? And so I think that's the that should be the the mindset of I think everyone here because it's not faulty project, faulty study, blah blah blah. No millions here. No, it's yes, good, solid plan. I think, um, but in in today's world and the way things are now, we need to be careful. Um, when we talked about that. Again, the sales tax that the city relies on. We've seen it decline and go down. You look at housing, they're not being built. You look at the non-developer portion, you know, rising, the developer portion decreasing. What is that doing? We do also rely on property taxes, and if that's not working out too well for us, what's going to happen as a whole? Obviously, that's not stated in this report because that's, that's just not the way it's been for years. I don't think anyone's ever been able to say, this is what the impact fee is, and this is what it does to your community. For some reason, that's just not part of the scope of work. But I think that, again, this is you know, good information, yet we live in critical times that, you know, it's, 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 it's depressing and it's pressing on everyone. Thank you, Commissioner. I guess the question here, uh, Yonder, before you go forward, is this commission willing to accept, okay, the plan developed by the city of Brownsville, working with the planning department, the developers who participated, okay, the engineers and experts that assisted PUB to help meet okay, the, all that was taken into account in developing this plan. So I think that's the first thing the commission must either accept the experts' findings, compiled after a lengthy process through the kayak committee or not. Because if we're not going to accept the experts' findings, and I'm not an engineer, and I'm not an expert, then I think we're taking the role of experts and saying that this plan is no good. So where do we start cutting back? You know, where do we start saying we don't want to grow? And are we here to advocate for developers, or are we here to advocate for what's fair for the citizens and the developers and the future of the city of Brownsville of how it's going to grow. Is it going to grow based on the plan or is it going to grow based on reacting to our growth? Mayor, let me just, uh, let me just say that, you know, I, 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 I disagree, and I'll tell you why I do, because you're looking at, you're, we're hearing that the impact fee could be the maximum allowable, and you forget that the rates they're saying must go up or will go up, and there'll be a percentage which we don't know yet. Um, again, it's the rate payer that's going to feel the burden regardless whether, you know, whatever it is. You're right. This, if it is adopted, we need to figure out how can we put that into today's, in, into our, today's economy. I think that's a big issue. I don't think you can say, well, do you adopt it or you don't adopt it, and, and that closes the door on the issue. I don't think so. You need to be very careful. Because, again, we need to think about the rate pair. 
That is that's what the issue. But, but don't and worry about the day. So, I'm just saying. He's going to tell us, right? Again, we, we, need to, we need to be very careful. That's all I'm saying. You need to think about the rate payer when all of this is getting done. It's not just accept it or don't. You know, you're right. We need to accept it. But remember the rate payer. Yes, remember. Well, 21 years ago, we should have remembered. Let's hear about the rate payer. Um, we, we've uh, covered the big picture. Our responsibility is at $212 million. And we can take little pieces and address them as we go, but nonetheless, I've got to look at the, the, the big picture. Just to, just to give you a little bit of uh, to a foundation on our water system, where we stand today, the level of revenues. For 2009, we, we project $20,979,995 in revenues. It's not a $100 million system, you know, $20 million, $979. For illustrative purposes here, we've broken down a dollar into where each dollar goes. In, 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 in this year's budget. 21 cents goes to support O&M debt service at our southmost regional with water authority. 51 cents goes to cover all of the water system O&M, whether it's uh, the treatment plants, our distribution, uh, our pumps, our transmission, uh, uh, administrative engineering, customer service. 51 cents on the dollar goes to, to that effort. Debt service accounts for 17 cents the CLB transfer for eight cents, and then our reserve, uh, and this is uh, improvement fund or, or actual surplus, three, three cents. So that's where the dollar goes today. For wastewater, wastewater is a, is a $21.7 million system. Uh, 63 cents uh, on the dollar, the dollar goes to O&M, a little bit more intensive on the O&M side at, at our treatment facilities and our, and our collection systems, lift stations. Uh, debt service is 22 cents, the transfer to the city is 10 cents, and reserve is 5 cents. What I'm going to try to do here is, is align the actual construction cost on an annual basis that, that the plan calls for. In 2010, the total plant for water calls for $19.5 million of improvements, and this is everything combined of the water, the R&R, the, the the, the capacity eligible, capacity ineligible, 19.5. To finance this, I, what the, the approach we're taking is to issue debt. To satisfy debt service and coverage requirements, and then as revenues increase, the, 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 all the other components that are driven by gross <coughs> revenues also increase, I will have to increase uh, revenues by 4.2 million, going from 21.56 to 26. That translates into a 20, almost a 21% increase. The 21% sounds high, but here again, it reflects a need of 4.2 million to, to manage a debt service on construction requirements, cost of 19.5 million. That, Can you that have a breakdown on, on what the 21% or uh, how that would be spread out across the, the rate payers <coughs> on their individual bills? We, we, we have, uh, we'll have an illustration uh, on the average residential 10,000 gallon per month use. Yes. Uh, we, we, it, it, we, it gets a little bit more elaborate if we get into commercial and industrial, but we, we're taking the average water we'll consumption user in, in a few minutes. Okay. That, that additional dollar, that additional 4.2 million, if you look at, at each dollar now of the, of the revenue requirements, we're, we're at 19 cents dedicated to Southmost, 52 at O&M, 18 cents to debt service, 8 cents to the city, and 3 cents reserve. As we pro progress or proceed with the annual, meeting the annual requirements of the plan, uh, we're here finding ourselves with additional revenues and additional rate increases. As you can see, for every dollar, Southmost will probably be stable. O&M, uh, because it's a, it's, a, it's a different ratio now, uh, it's the debt service that actually takes, takes a, an increase here, going from 18 to 20 to 21. So you'll see here that for every dollar uh, of the new revenues, uh, it's a debt service that's accounting for because of us, our need to meet the, the construction costs that we funded with debt. So that's on the, that's on the water side. And, and here again, we would need um, a significant increase here, very significant, of course, uh, and then uh, smaller ones in future years. Once we have a big one, I mean, the, the ideal situation is have a, a lot of little ones, but because we're beginning with an aggressive approach in the, in the immediate years, uh, we're, we're having to project uh, a need for a bigger increase. On the wastewater side, 
Our 2010 uh, construction costs are 11 and a half, up to 20, in 2011, 18, 8, and 8. These uh, Debt service and, and coverage requirements will uh, require 2.2 million in additional revenues in 2010, 2 point, almost 2.3 in 2011, 800, 600, 722. This is, this is real quick, and I was asking the mayor, this is if we adopt the 3,084? This, this assumes uh, adopting the, the 3,486 the 30, and, and funding, wow. funding the, fifth, the 23 million with impact fields. So we're so you're saying 2010, which is next year, you're gonna you're gonna come before us and ask us for a 10 percent increase. 20. 20.94. 20. 20.94 20. 20. increase 20 on the water. 21. 20.94. That's 20 percent. 20 percent for water, and nine and 10 okay. almost 11 percent for wastewater. You're, you're right. And if we adopt anything less than that, then those rates, those percentages go up, right? Mm -hmm. We'll see in a minute. Yes or no? The, the answer is no. I'm it's right. no because you'd have to adjust. But, no, he's saying this. Yes, <laughs> well, let, let, let him say it. Answer. Let him say it. Let's rely on the expert. If we adopt the plan, we adopt the plan <laughs> let's rely on the expert. You've broken down where the money's going to, okay? And with the, the, the race that you need to, to, to make it work, okay? Balancing it out. But if we don't do anything... If you don't do anything, you'll, we'll see a small increase in 2013 if you leave it at 280. Because I'll need some money to finance uh, and pay debt service on 23 million. Uh, debt service on 23 million over 25 years is is is, uh, is manageable at a lower impact fee. Yeah, but if yeah. we don't do anything, that means we don't build the sewer plant. We don't do anything. That's, that's, that's what we're, we're talking, talking about the rates. Well, that's the sewer plant we're going to proceed in the immediate future. That's why we granted the 30 million credit. So that's a must. You know, with or without the impact fee, we're going to find a way to debt finance. But if no rates are approved, how are you going to do it? He's telling me. Then, I, then right we won't do it. That's what I said. <laughs> so a lot, a lot is predicated on, on, the, on the future She's need for rates. Okay. Here again, uh, the, the, the big driver of the rate increases are the 189 million of the 212, or 89%. The 11% of the 23 million comes in on the third, fourth year, and, and debt service on that is, is a lot smaller. Okay, uh, what I'm going to show here is the average monthly customer impact. If we do everything, all of the repair and replacement and the capacity, finance it with debt and assume the collection of the 3486 impact fee, we, we already saw the 20% 20, 20 rate increase. That translates into, for the, for the average user of 10,000 gallons a month, the, the bill is currently 2650. That, bill would increase by 583 a month to be able to generate that 4.2 million that satisfies the debt service on that 19 million first year construction debt requirement. So as we progress, the additional increases over the next five years would add a dollar in 2011, four cents in 2012, 44 cents in 2013, 49 cents in 2014. The overall cumulative average bill increase in five years will be seven dollars and eighty cents um, if, if, if the financing plan were to you know uh, stay as it is and that's everything combined the repair and replacement alone if we say we're going to put aside the, the capacity related stuff and, and let growth you know defer growth the, the repair and replacement alone the requirement is 18.31 percent and of course this repair and replacement is, is to address the needs of the current system the failing needs of the current system that would uh, the 1831 would translate into 509 monthly bill impact and then as you can see here over the years the cumulative is six dollars and one cents if we were to adopt some of these and, and some of these rate increases could be smoothed out a little bit more if we were to adopt what i didn't hear you I'm sorry? If we were to adopt what? If we were to adopt the 1831, the 9.95, the 106, if these rate increases, then you would see these incremental uh, dollars or cents to your bill with a cumulative increase of 601 by, by, the, by the fifth year, by 2014. So your bill would go from 2650, so you can see the average monthly bill, 
to uh, uh, 32, 33 for water. But we'll get a new water treatment plant, a new more lift stations, more capital improvements to support growth. If we go, if we don't do nothing, then we're not going to do, then we're not going to have those things. This so middle we'll, section, we'll be, we'll be hurting growth by not. This middle section is repair and replacement of existing infrastructure that could be failing. So this, some of this, the engineers would argue they have to do it for regulatory compliance. It's the capacity that, that is, you know, subject to further evaluation based on growth, actual reality. If the 3486 was adopted, were adopted, the 23 million uh, would not trigger a rate increase uh, within the 2014 time period. We didn't evaluate beyond, just within the next five years. Debt service on 23 million, depending on when I issue it, is manageable with the collection, if you remember, of 4.2 million in, in annual, mm -hmm. if you remember this chart here, if I collect 4.2 4 million at 3486, that would be enough to satisfy debt service on the 23 million. The, the 315 at 75 would also be enough. So here again, uh, the, the rate impact would be zero. If we were to do nothing and leave it at 280, then we would see an increase in 2013. The 280 would not be sufficient to cover debt service on 23 minutes. So we would see an increase in 2013 and beyond. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not showing that you know, at this point. For wastewater, we saw the 10.91. That would translate into a $3.47 47 monthly increase in, in 2010. And then all these additional increases would, would uh, cumulatively uh, call for a 940 increase in the monthly bill. And this is 940 on top of the existing $32 that an average $8,000 wastewater uh, this or customer uses. And this is for all of the plan uh, revenue, uh, repair and replacement, and capacity. The repair and replacement alone uh, percent increase is 9.29. So that, that is 9.29 uh, of the everything combined here. That would generate 295 additional for, for the average customer. Uh, over the five years, they're looking at 551 increase. And this is just to address the repair and replacement. Nothing to do with capacity. Same story on the capacity. If we uh, adopt a maximum allowable for wastewater, we would not see a rate increase uh, within the, 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 the five-year horizon. If we leave it at, at, the, at the 170, uh, I believe that's part of the 280, then we would see an increase, a slight increase in 2013. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is in, in the grand scheme of things, it's a 189 million part of the 212 that's driving you know, our, our, our financing uh, needs and, and of course through, through rates at this time because of how the plan has been formulated uh, and the timing of those projects. Uh, anything can change in that plan. I say it's just a plan uh, subject to, to fine tuning as, as we get into the actual uh, projects. Well, I guess the concern I have is is the cost on the rate pair and have you have you calculated various amounts for the impact fee instead of the, the maximum allowable what if it was 2900 or 2700 or, or anything like that have you have you come up with other scenarios other than the maximum we we evaluated the 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 rate impact at the maximum at 75% of maximum and at 50% of maximum about, just because I'm bad at math, what would 75% of maximum be? Huh? Well, no, but of the impact fee. That was the revenue generated. Huh? <coughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. If you want to keep on going until they figure it out. Combine. Twenty six hundred, and then fifty percent would be uh, thirteen. So, so we we would not see rate impacts at those two levels at twenty nine hundred, twenty six hundred. 
75%. And, and 13. You would not see rate impacts at 2600? Within the five year horizon. The monies generated would be enough because we're probably up to, to, to debt finance and then use, apply the, the collected fees to manage that service, uh, then it can, it can sustain payment of debt service. If we were to approach it from the pay as you go, you only construct as you collect, then not even the 34, I mean, it would be a timing issue. The 34 would be short, depending okay, so on the timing. Basically, you're saying that at 75%, if we're going to have growth, people are going to buy in at that amount and they're going to they're going to get connections and you're not going to see a rate increase to the to the consumer for 5 years is that correct attributable to the 23 million we'll see rate increases for the R&R and the NL I'm really not liking the whole rate increase idea so where where do we go where we see maybe if somebody wants to buy in and they want to have a development or they want to build an office and they're willing to to go out and get the loan for that without having to tag the consumer for the next couple of years until we know where the economy is going to go. Where, where's that middle ground? We recognize that in applying and Black and V suggesting the 30 million credit to, to manage the requirements of that 53 million eligible capacity within the first two and a half years, three years. So. Even if we started, I mean, even if we started collecting in the year three or four, we would hope that at a, at a certain level it would be enough to manage debt service for the financing of that 23 million. If we start today, we would accumulate at whatever level until that third year because we're paying for the first 30 million, put everything else with rate payer money, and then apply, start applying it in the third year. So we do have an option here, start collecting, accumulate, apply it in the third and fourth year, defer any... Based on demand, based on what you have. Defer any collections until the third or fourth year, and then at that point uh, assess the debt service requirements as we move along on that 23 million. So okay. uh, if you tell me I'm going to, if, if you allow me to collect tomorrow at 34, I'm not going to spend it because the plan says I can't spend it until the third year, until I reach the first 30 million and then on the on the next dollar I start using the impact fee. The projections show that we'll spend that 30 million in two and a half. If things are slow, we may go into the third, fourth, or fifth year on that 30 million. I, I can tell you one thing, I won't vote for a rate increase to fund, to fund the, the new uh, 30 million if the ratepayer is not going to pay his share because it would be unfair to the citizens of Brownsville to just put all the burden on them to meet their growth because that sewer plant is for their needs. And here again, it, it's, it's a regulatory issue that we'll have to weigh, you know, very carefully. How much longer is this? Oh, this is the last one. This, this takes both uh, water and wastewater combined. Uh, you'll see here that uh, everything together in five years, we're looking at a 1720 uh, increase to your, to your bill of $58. Uh, the R&R loan is 1152 and here again the capacity would be uh, uh, zero at, at the 175 or 50 percent level. And that is it. <coughs> Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you, Leandro. Uh, Mr. Leandro, one more thing, ma'am. Did, did you give us the numbers? Um, this, this, how old is this, do you know? The uh, summary of, of fees by different cities? <laughs> What is the current rate for the uh, surrounding areas uh, in Brownsville? Oh, you have another presentation or two? We already know this. Who's this one? Who's next? Richard. And this just shows uh, all we did was pull together some of the surrounding municipalities to show where they're at today. Um, it is a comparison. It's all it is. It's not necessarily an apples to apples. 
because what they have there doesn't mean they're doing the same thing with their system or with their infrastructure that you're doing. Likewise, vice versa. They, they may be ahead of you. They may be behind you on infrastructure. The, the low ones may be good. Uh, they may be subsidizing the same way you've been subsidizing for the last 18 years. There's, there's no telling on this. All it does is provide you the input on the numbers. Sampling. It, that's all it is, yes, sir. What's the average of all those put together? Uh, can somebody do that for us? Just add them all up. Don't know, don't know what that is. It's, no. it's irrelevant. Um, it's not applicable. Get the average. The 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 intent of the impact fee is to recoup for capital improvements. That's it, the intent. So, it is. how much capital improvements do we want to do to nurture growth, or we don't? That's what it comes down. The, to. the bottom line really is. Okay. Any other questions? Move to close. Well, then may I have a question? We have people here from the audience here that want to speak. if I may ask just a couple of questions. Richard, real quick, um, going to, um, again, we're saying the impact fee, one-time fee for new development, correct? Yes, sir. The demand on new development. So on the east side of Brownsville, that's where growth is taking place, yet everybody has to pay for that new growth, right? Right, that's Through right. the impact fee. It's not, it's not that area that takes care of itself. It's everyone has to take care of it. And the reason behind that is because of the way you operate your system. You have a flat system. It's a loop system. It, if you lose part of it here, you still guarantee service to everybody. You don't shut anybody off. Everybody operates the system as a whole. Do other communities uh, operate the same way? Absolutely. That's exactly that's, that's, it. Is. They operate uh, the the same only way thing you would do, and what you're suggesting, uh, SALS is one example of it. They have different impact fees for different areas. Geographically, their terrain is different, different ways that they move the, the water, the wastewater. Uh, and those those create different needs for different uh, different pricing, different costs. Okay, going going back to the uh, a PUB on sprinkler systems. I don't know if it's required that whenever you have a sprinkler system, there's an addition, there's a, a new line that needs to get hooked up per its sprinkler system. I don't know if that's still correct or if I'm if I'm saying that's correct or not. Can anybody clarify that? If a resident and or business is going to hook up uh, install a sprinkler system. Do they, is that the, their, the main line and then their sprinkler? Do they have to create and purchase a, a sprinkler line for that? And if they do have to purchase that additional line, is that a second impact fee assessed for that new development? Yes. Yes, yes. Leandro, that's a... Please come to the mic up here so everybody can hear you. State your name. Hi, Mr. Estrada, Assistant Director there, Water Waste Water in PUB. Yeah, when, it's, when a developer comes in or a, or a residence or a business and, they re, and they're, they're going to install a sprinkler system mm -hmm. for the yard, either they put a backflow preventer on their existing domestic meter or they install a separate meter, which is a separate impact fee. Right. But the benefit to that is that they don't get charged a sewer mm -hmm. on the sprinkler meter because your consumption of your water meter uh, dictates your sewer charge. Okay. But again, that impact fee, if the 30, if the... Um, if it was the 31, 34, then that would that'd be twice for that correct. for that homeowner or that business owner. If it's two meters, business. correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bernard? <laughs> Mark Bernard here with Coast for Realty, and I am a developer in town. Uh, I wanted to show this graphic example of what the concern I have as a developer, and these are hard facts. We are uh, looking at a 40-acre subdivision that we can get four lots per acre. That's 160 lots. And if we can sell them in this market for $20,000 a piece, and those are low-end lots, that's a lot of money for a low-end lot. That's $3.2 million in sales. The closing costs of the 320000 we have to buy the land for about $20,000 per acre. That's 800000 Street utilities, uh, uh, development costs for those are about 6500 per lot. That's $1,040,000. Engineering is 200000 and financing. If you get it all done within a year and sold those lots out, you would have about $200,000 of uh, uh, financing costs. That's a gross profit of 640000 for a $3.2 million uh, investment. That's a 20% return on your money. And that would be, life would be great if that's what you did. But, Mark, nobody's going to be investing in, in that right now. Right. right. the way it is right now. This yeah. you have, right, this scenario you have based on, you know, 
today's times is not an accurate scenario. This, this was heyday activity that we've just been through. So now let's add the impact fee to it. At maximum of $3,400, that's $544,000 on 160 lots that that developer's got to pay. He makes $96,000 for years worth of work and $3.2 million worth of exposure. Do, would any of you all do that for that little profit? That banker right there wouldn't let me borrow that kind of money to do that. If we go to the proposed number of, that was asked, talked about a while ago of $2,600, which is that bottom example, it's $416,000, and he prays that he can sell the lots, and he makes $224,000 or 7% over out on a $3.2 million investment. I'm just telling you, the facts, those are facts. And that's where the problem is. Uh, what I heard earlier is that 90% of our $212 million problem is going to be on the ratepayers anyway. It's, it cannot be on the impact fee uh, area. And so what I'm saying is there's, when I was on the impact fee committee, the questions I kept asking and everybody who didn't want to address them is, what are the alternatives in addition to an increased impact fee to help fund these infrastructure costs <coughs> as we need them. We talk, I heard it earlier, we've got some grants that we're looking to, we've had those in the past. So we built things like the Robindale plant and those kinds of things with grants. Some of those went away under new administration, they're coming at us like a flood. We need to be spending our study money on how to get a hold of those stimulus dollars. So grants, stimulus monies, the, uh, there's TERS that we have as alternatives to do things and uh, becoming more efficient, as they talked about, living within our means, and uh, studying, uh, I want to spend dollars on studying these alternative financing sources that these other cities have had to wrestle with, too. We're not the only ones who have to wrestle with, with the growth. I am real concerned about that little guy. If that little guy does not already have a uh, water tap for his water meter, which is where this is going to hit him, he probably has, he's in an older subdivision. That poor little guy probably paid on that lot for the last 10 years of his life. He finally got it paid for. Now he's ready to build his house and he's got to borrow money again to go get a, a, a connection fee for his, for his uh, water meter in his sewer of $3,400 to $3,500. That's a ton of money. Then the, uh, the, the mayor pointed out that we have a flood, a mar the market is flooded with lots. There is a lot of lots out there. There's a lot of subdivisions out there that need to be absorbed before we get into this new stuff. My big concern is if we've got long-range items, long-range infrastructure like sewer plants that need to be built, and we're paying for them with short-term money, which is impact fees. We've seen, if we talk to Ben, we can find out that the, that the plats that have come before the, this planning and zoning and this city commission in the last year, year and a half, are almost non-existent. I know of two different surveying companies that have closed down because they don't have any work. And so if we count on those impact fees to help fund our sh those portions of the infrastructure, and that's the only source that we're looking to, we've got problems. I'm not saying we don't adjust the impact fee. I'm saying we need to look for those alternative sources to do that. And then I just wanted to clarify one other thing about the use of the funds. The impact fee funds, uh, and we keep crossing over with what the impact fee funds and the ratepayer funds can be used for. Um, can somebody clarify one of the previous uh, uh, schedules was up there was related to repairs and infrastructure? What, uh, how, is, how is that, how does the impact fees help fund that? Okay, I just wanted to clarify. All right, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Bernard. You want to say just motion to close. We have a hearing. motion to close with Commissioner Garza. Well, hold on, Mayor. Is there anyone else that would like to come and speak? I think this is a public hearing. Yeah, well, you need to stand up in there and say, please come forward. You want to withdraw your motion? Yeah. I withdraw the motion. Yeah. Some of you guys just see me and you want to close everything. Mira, I withdrew my motion, Mr. Mira, la gente, la gente, the people are watching us downtown, todo Brownsville, okay? Y tengo que decirle a la gente esto. Son tres mil cuatrocientos y pico de dólares que una familia pobre va a tener que sacar de su bolsa si él quiere hacer su casa. If you all want to make your house, you're going to have three thousand and something dollars when you raise the fee. 
which is okay with me. I mean, raise the fee. Maybe the people will buy the homes uh, without building. Pero hay mucha gente pobre que no necesita estar pagando tres mil y pico. Tú tenías... Alex, 280. Alex, yes, sir. somebody's got to pay for it. Huh? Somebody's got, I want to explain something to you. I understand. Somebody's got to pay for it. So that means yeah, I understand everybody your else got to pay for it. I understand your position. And you want to build a sewer con ese dinero. I understand where, where you guys come from. That's wonderful. Pero la gente, ¿me entiendes? Y yo sé bien que estás tratando de defender la gente porque ya es, it's about time that you raise it. I understand all that. Okay? But, por ejemplo... You have here wonderful figures, you got experts and, and matemáticas y todo. La gente, the people that are watching, they don't care about your matemáticas and all the stuff. They want to know how much you're going to raise their rates, that's right. their bill. Okay? That's what, uh, that, that's what uh, I would like to know cuánto va a subir el bill. Okay. Now, from 280, yo podía ir a hacer mi casita, ¿verdad? Y pagarles 280 para que me conecten. Now, I want to ask one question. Is these poor people going to have some kind of financial or something? Because the, 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 big, the big guys, they got a letter of credit, and, 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 and they got all kinds of stuff that the banks are helping them. But the poor people, they got to have cash. If not, you will not connect. Or are they going to have some kind of uh, easy payments, you know, $25 a month or something to pay this, this stuff? They have to go to the bank. Got to go to the bank. I, I want to get this straight. Are you for or against... Raising the impact fee. No, no, no. Uh, that, that's not I'm asking problem. you a question. No, 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 no. I think, first of all... Because no, last no. week you came and you're See, for the people uh, uh, and for stop mira, putting mira, the burden mira, on the mira, people. Mira. I, uh, and do now you, you understand? changed your attitude okay. now. Okay, So okay. where are you at? Okay, let me explain it to you again. Jeez. Let me explain it to you again. Dije yo, the people that don't have money, they're going to have to teach out from 280 to 3,000 and something. What am Alex, I saying? Alex, Alex, yeah, that's the 280 is paid by the developer, not by the lot owner. It, no, it's when, the by the buy, when the Consumer. little guy still buys the lot, the, it's still paid the developer the already loan. paid the, 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 the impact if fee. They now, if they want to pass it. Now, if, 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 let, let me tell you this. If you're advocating that we not raise the impact fee because you're going to hurt the developer, no I mean, you're, going hurt the, you're going to hurt the little yeah, guy. Yeah, but I didn't say no, that. Listen to that. Yes, you did. No, no, you're going to hurt not. all the citizens no, of Brownsville because no, they have to that. pay. They have to pay that fee. I didn't say that. I am asking that if you're going to give the, the, the people a chance so that they can. Because these big, big <laughs> developers, they got ways of getting the money to pay 3000 right. or something. You're right. You're absolutely right. But the poor people, what, where, where, are they going to, where are they going to get the money? What are you huh? talking about? If you don't have the money, then you don't build. Le, les cortan, les cortan. If you don't have the money to build a house, you don't build a house. But you know what? The rest of the people who you stand up for, and you come with the church protecting the people who are paying high utility bills, those are the ones paying for the developers. You change your attitude every other week. I don't know why. Well, I know why. But you, you, you're all wrong. You're all wrong on how you change your views. One week you come in protecting the poor and we can't put the burden on, on the rate payers. Te estoy haciendo una pregunta. Like, I'm doing a question. I'm asking a question, oh, guy. Oh. And you give me all this baloney. You go, no, no, you're, you're full of baloney. Right? The question you that I'm asking, oh, please, please, how is the people the person, going to pay yeah. the 3400 okay. or whatever? Let me whatever. suggest something to you, Alex. Yeah. Please go sit down with somebody from PUB to tell, explain to you yeah. exactly what this is all about because I think uh, you need some information and clarity because the impact fee helps keep the rates down okay That's not and it's a well, one time well, fee well, 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 I, it's I, it's I, I heard, fee. I heard a man say that fee. those are just assumptions oh, me. those are just assumptions it's, it's a one time fee paid by the That's developer yeah. that originally bought raw land Yo no estoy If it's good for the city, Mr. Resendez, you're welcome. You're welcome to my copy. You're welcome to my copy. How is the poor people supposed to do that? You're, you're welcome to my okay, copy. That's a huh? legitimate question. You can have my copy. Garza, tú todo lo que sabes es agarrar papeles. Look at the papers. I don't care about your papers. I care about the people. You're going to raise the rates, and you're going to give them 3,000 y pico de dinero porque tienen que pagar. I don't care about your damn papers. Mr. Resendez. Okay, Mr. Perez. What do you want to be, huh? Mr. Resendez. What? Let Mr. Perez come up. Everybody see Let who come up? Mr. Perez, he's next. Well, wait a minute. I'm talking. You don't even want to chop me up. What's the matter with you, Mayor? Mr. Resendez, be respectful, please. Okay. He changed your attitude. That's why. Changed your whole view. Mr. Perez. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, I don't know what to say after that anymore. I can't, I can't hear you. Go ahead, Mr. Perez. I can't hear you. Oh. You, you can move the mic. 
Okay. Uh, Jose Perez, I'm with uh, Hispanic Development, and, uh, and again, mayors and members of the commission, I just want to kind of, you know, make my comments. And my and this will be on a personal, my personal opinion. So. I still can't uh, hear, sir. I'm sorry. I can't uh, hear. I've been in. Me. Yes, we, my company. We've been in business for at least 15 years, and we've been in all sides of the fence from developing lots to selling to individuals to doing houses and lots to selling packages to builders to on both sides of the fence and now with this uh, economic recession I've been on that side of the fence too now we have you know inventory lots 100 lots in inventory we have maybe 20 houses in inventory we have a plat that we had one and paid up front the 280 that, and you all were mentioning that a while ago did that stick or did, did I got to change well the builder was going to buy it decided it pulled out so now I got a plat there not approved, but we went and paid the impact fees at 280, not because we wanted to save the money, because we were really going to plat that and sell it to a builder, pulled out, so now we're also stuck with more inventory of land and didn't get to the platting fees. But in either case, uh, my my opinions on the, uh, I mean, you can put impact fees at $10,000 right now. Nobody's going to develop property in the next couple of years. There's 2,000 more lots in inventory. But, but we're not going to 10,000, right Mr. Pettis. We're not going to 10,000. Yes. That's yeah. Stick to the numbers. He's giving an example. Okay. Right. Yeah. He's giving an example. Yeah. Let him speak. Yes. I mean, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, as part of the development piece, nobody's going to go develop land right now. With the excess of la inventory of lots, there's over 2,000 lots in inventory. There's probably hundreds of houses in inventory. By the time you flush all that out, it's going to be a couple of years. And, it, and we think we're going to put a $3,000 impact fee and expect that revenues to come in and support a, the Robindale treatment plant. What's not going to happen? It's not going to come out of there. Out of San Antonio, develop is still developing, and their impact fee is close to six thousand. <coughs> well, you can't compare San Antonio can't and Bronzeville. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of other places at five thousand. Yeah. You can't. Austin. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and Round Rocks, our size. Okay. They're five thousand. Yeah, but is that the same? Uh, Developing infrastructure in a hill country and you know, going Pettis. through you know those types of terrain as opposed to this the difference. Pettis. The right. lots you already have, they're not going to be affected. And nobody's, right. build, nobody's building right now, so yes. you're not going to be affected. So what is your opposition to it if you're not going to be affected? When we're looking at a 10-year plan, mm -hmm. you don't want us to plan for the future? or do you No, that we're going to pass. Wait a second, Mr. Commissioner. Yes. Please be wait to be recognized. You don't want us to plan for the future, yes. or you don't want just to pay because you don't want to pay? No, I don't oh, mind. Wait a second. Let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, uh, now, we have a responsibility right. not to look out just for you, but to look out for <laughs> you and the entire city exactly. for the future growth of the city, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, do we accept a 10-year plan or we don't? That's a question, okay? Because you're going to be here and maybe not here tomorrow, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not going to be here maybe tomorrow, okay? But the thing is, the city's going to go grow. Mm -hmm. We need to plan. Now, in order to meet that plan that was developed with developers and everybody else, this is the recommended rate. If you don't want to see that it's done, the then rate. where do we say we're not going to, we have to cut out some. We need a sewer plant. Mm -hmm. We don't build it? You're saying not to build it? You're going to build it anyway. Saying, Mayor. No, because well, if, you're why, why you anyway? if you're out of compliance, if you're out of compliance, you're going to have to okay. go but we have to and meet rates. the compliance. We right? have to raise rates. To do that. You have to well, raise that's what we rates. need to be looking at. Because there's but no you want us to raise rates on the people, but not you. That's what you're saying. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, but you say we're going to build it anyway, but that sewer plant's going to service you and your new lots to meet the, your sewage, okay. okay? And you want the ratepayers to pay for that, but not you. No, I'm not saying, uh, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with increasing the rate. What I'm saying is, we need to look at this, al different alternatives, alternative? okay? Different, looking at it from an e economic impact view. I mean, do we raise it $3,000 and keep the growth, like nobody's gonna go and develop right now at 2%, 1% growth? Or is there an economic study where, what about if it goes at $1,500? Maybe you increase the growth by that. An increase in growth, what does that bring? That's going to bring revenue, oh, tax know. revenue, right. tax base is going to be increasing, your sales taxes, you got employment. Yeah. Construction and development brings a lot, of, lo a lot with it. Mr. Payne, you bring up here and here, it's all about me, me, me. No. The no. Yes, it is. No, they no, don't sir. want to pay their fair share for a fair plan for 10 years, for 10 years, mm -hmm. that allows the growth. And the minimal part is being paid by developers, 23 million out of 212 million. 23 million out of 53 million so the city can have 
good infrastructure so you, you can be in business. But no, what I'm hearing here, no. it's all, hey, figure out any no. other way, any other way. But don't raise the impact no. fee to the maximum. We, can do, we need to raise the, the impact fees. Mayor, he never said not to raise the impact fee. No, I'm we need to the raise the impact fees. Yeah. But we need to look at it from a developer point, the cities, and the rate payers. Okay? Well, it's going to be good for all of them. Look at everything. Okay? Yeah. We're, we're going to say, well, we're going to increase in the rate payers. We're going to say, well, we can't hurt developers. We're going to say, well, what's good for the city? was the purpose of the process to, to come up with this plan? Wasn't that the purpose? We had developers on the kayak. Yeah. We had developers Wasn't on the Wasn't that the purpose yeah, of the committee, all it is the, is the input, and coming up with a 10-year plan? Now you don't like the plan. No. The plan is Mayor, based on obviously, growth, obviously, certain growth, Mayor, let me, and let certain infrastructure. Obviously, but if you don't like economic piece See, of it. but you had over a year and a half to find mean, ways, meet with PUV. You could have done it yourself and come up with a developer cost. But you're coming in the last moment. No, we don't come in. No, we went along it again so we can go through no, 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 all this we again went, in a year. We went to the capital improvement meetings. You know, we, you know, we expressed our I don't know what stance you have. But, but I think, Charlie, what you're trying to do is, what we're trying to do is look at not increasing the, the rates. I think that's yeah. the most important thing. Oh, that we're not, we I'm need not to be looking at. For yeah, at I, yeah. I think there's an economic point of view we need to look at it. Do we... Well, I, I, if I may? It, yes, sir. What my concern is, is how do we sustain the repairs, maintenance that we would need at PUB mm -hmm. because we already have that type of... We've got deteriorating infrastructure. Right. How are we going to allow for some growth that can be adjusted and do something that is not going to kill any future development at the public sector rate. And what I'm seeing here is that 73 percent of our new connections are from small businesses mm -hmm. and individuals and not from developers. Right. And I agree that after 20 years of not having any kind of impact fee increase, it needs to go up. Yeah. And it becomes Definitely. a question of what the number is yes. and what number That's do we it. find that doesn't impact the rate payer at this point over the next three to five years because I don't think anybody knows what our economy is going to do and I don't think anybody wants to put more of a burden on some of a community here that, that basically $8,000 a year is the average minimum average median income for someone. I mean that that's astounding. Yes. And if we're going to sit here and we're going to jack up the rates so that we can build a new sewer plant, well, you know, nobody's going to be here because there's not going to be any jobs. And we have to create other economic engines to create more wealth for the community. And we do need to get money from developers, and we need to get pe people to pay a, pay a fair rate across the board. Yeah. It shouldn't be, oh, well, we're not going to charge you because you're a developer, or we're not going to charge you because you're a rate payer. Obviously, the rate payers are going to have to pay their fair share, mm -hmm. and the developers are going to have to pay their fair share. And, and you're, you're correct. I'm, I'm not saying we're not supposed to raise the impact fees. I'm saying what is the magic number? Is there What's a magic equitable? number yeah. in there where we, at the same time you don't want to increase rate, but at the same time you don't want to stunt the growth, you know, promote growth? There, there's got to be a number in there. What's, just because we recommended a high number, we're going to go with that high number. Did you participate in the process? We were in there, yes. Okay. And you couldn't convince them to come up with, with something less than this? No, I mean, the, the numbers... See, they've That's done this study different ways okay. and different, so different the, the ways average, and average, different times, and they come average, up with the same uh, number. Wage earn, I mean, uh, uh, average person earns 8000 They're not affected by this. Who's affected by this is the developer that has to do the cost. The developer is the one that's affected by this, not the 8000 uh, wage earner. The one that's affected is the developer. The 8000 wage earner is going to be affected if we have to subsidize the developer, yes, they're going to be affected in their rates. That's they're how they But also, the, you got to look. We're looking at growth. You know, we don't mind. Yes, you got to. You have to increase the rate. You got to have to increase the impact because you have to. That's. I mean, that's a known fact. At what point do you want to do it to where it doesn't I just, just put a you know put a high number in the developer, let him pay for it? And I know, Mr. I mean, we got a banker here. They don't finance the impact fees. They I, don't. I think it's sad that 23 yeah. million out of 212 million, yeah. you're standing here. And, and, and actually advocating that we go down because not it's not yes well, you are because because you don't want to pay your minimum share but what happens the, if the in the future share what happens in the future years you decide well you know this is not working let's drop the rate the impact fee down yeah we can drop it back down if it's yeah what's going to happen to the ones that paid the $3,400 no. how are they going to feel with somebody else comes back and they're going to pay $1,500 what's going to happen there 
I think you should start at a number that's the workable. If you had to pay for the infrastructure to get your development done, it yeah. would be astronomical. The citizens are subsidizing you and have been subsidizing you. And I'm talking about your industry, not yeah. you personally, your industry. Yes. The, to the tune of $91 million over a 15-year period. How much? They paid 97% of the, of, the, of the capital improvements yeah. to service the growth that we've so seen today. $91 million. Right. And, and now that we're asking for a minimal, minimal. Yes, but we've we got to realize, because we kept saying $90-some million, and you're thinking that developers took, ran away with $97 million. Well, that, the, the lots weren't increased. That savings was passed on to the, the buyers, the citizens of Browns who bought the lots at a cheaper rate. It's not that they... It was nice when the developers weren't making money. They sure weren't complaining. You know? You know? It, it wasn't that they it was just passed on. I mean, you talk about a $3,000 impact fee now, you got a holding cost. It's not just going to be at 3000 to the lot. You know, you got holding costs for the lot. It depends how long you hold it. And then if you get it to a builder, then he's got holding costs over that. The end period of that is going to a three thousand dollar impact fee is probably going to be six thousand dollars. You'll still 000. do it because you're going to make money. So you don't make a, a hundred thousand. You make eighty thousand. You're still going to do it. You, you as a developer, you will develop. No matter if this impact fee is at three thousand or at two eighty, because building houses. I know a lot of friends that develop. They make money. Now, if you want to build little thirty thousand dollar houses and you feel you might get affected by individual developers, well, 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 then you're down with the market now, and you better put your numbers where you're competitive. But, you don't, yeah. but the big developers don't want to do that. Why? Yeah, but the majority of the, of the people here are low-income people who buy lots. Mm -hmm. You have lots that are at, you know, Well, oh, say you're not looking out for the little guy. You're not looking out for the little guy. You're looking out for yourself no, you gotta, and the industry of the, of the developers because they make money. They pass through this expense. It's part of doing business. Yes, as part of, and that's why you get you into business. Five thousand dollars, you knock off a lot of families out that can't build. But look they at our rates home. now, they Jose. Can't. Look at our rates now; they're the highest in the region in our water and waste water. People with low income cannot afford to continue subsidizing developers. They can't afford it. That's what I'm saying. We got to look at it from different angles, from an economic point at it. of view. We looked at it three times, from an economic and we point spent eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We looked at it. And I'm not the expert, and neither of these gentlemen. The experts are saying, this what will it take to fulfill a 10-year plan, okay, to meet future growth and keep the rates down to a minimum and allow healthy growth. But, and you can make money. But you have to go with the increase of the demand. You know, if you're going to hit a $3,400 impact fee right away, and it doesn't work next year, we're going to come back and drop it down? The, the kayak committee can meet every six months. Yes, but we, had, we set a fee right now of $3,400. They can, they can go up or down. A year, they can go up or down. It's going to come down. No, so anybody can, who paid $3,400 the first year... They can go up or down. This is the maximum. Once you adopt the maximum, okay? You can visit in six months and say, okay, the expectations yeah. are not there. You lower down some. Then you can go back up within that time frame. Yeah, the, la the last development I did was uh, out of the city limits, right off the city limits, but it used to military water because that's what the service are, military highway water supply, sewer, and all their fees that they added. This was on the 77 lots, and my numbers at the end was uh, $87,000 for those, and it comes down to $1,140, and that's for water and sewer. Let me ask you something, one question there. Uh, El Hardin Water Supply, GG, what is their impact fee? They're right here in Brownsville. El, El Hardin Water Supply. It's a lot more than 3000 I can tell you that. Yeah, there's no growth there either. Huh? <laughs> Nobody's building there. Are you asking me the... And, and you, know, you know what oh. the problem is, Jose? We have land inside the city of Brownsville yeah. that already can be developed. It costs more for the developer. So he'll go on the outskirts of the city, mm -hmm. buy cheap land, and then expect PUB to do all the infrastructure so he can make the money. And that's not fair. If when, the there's, when there's land here inside, yeah. like in South Most, it, it can be developed, but no, they don't want to. They want to go get the cheap land and get the rate payers to subsidize and build all the infrastructure but to make it so they can make Developers have paid for offsite improvements for always. Uh, they've always paid for offsite. Okay. You want to close the public hearing, somebody? So, uh, hold, on, hold on, Mayor. Hold on, Don. There's some. Hold on, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pastor. Ma 
Mayor, hold on, let me ask one more. I didn't see you. Mayor, let me ask one question again. Thank you for your Thank you, Mr. Pettis. PUB has not recommended any number to the commission, correct? Okay, so there is no recommended number. Although when you all want to increase rates, you recommend a number, correct? But we're not here today with that, right? Well, okay. That's, the only thing I that's, that, that's misleading because the plan uh, what's being proposed and the plan says 3,486. Don't try to don't no, try to color that up. No, I'm trying and to cover. John Bruzziak said to last week. Hold, hold on, hold on, Mayor. I'm not trying to cover anything up. Don't you've you've been you've been spending not, quite a bit on what people are saying and what they're not saying. Uh, John Bruzziak so said it last week. I think you should be the last one to speak. You're misleading people. You're John, misrepresenting the facts. You've been misleading the whole conversation just prior to mine. All yep. of it. Sir, we spent you know hundreds that. of thousands of dollars. I'm not talking to about that. I'm plan. talking about a conversation that you were having with a gentleman, and you took everything he said and you spun it around. Everyone saw, heard well, it. I'm and here knows to re it. represent the citizens of Brownsville and the actually, developers. You're not. You're actually Obviously, not you're right. here to protect the developers. No, no I'm not. You're representing you the developers, sir. No, no, yes, you are. Incorrect. You're I'm advocating the one, for the developers. I'm the one that said about we're, we're trying to take care of the rate pair, uh, and you're not trying to raise the rates. Adopt plan. Adopt the plan. You're trying to raise the rates on the rate pair. And Adopt that's, the and plan that's what you're doing, the experts have put before you. The experts. And you're increase the experts. rates on the rate pair. You're not Mr. You're Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I withdraw my motion to uh, close so that these folks can speak. Hey, Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. My name is Brad Burks, and Valley Interfaith asked me to read their statement so it could be read in English. Uh, since 1990, impact fees have been studied more than any issue. Even though study over, over study has been recommended an increase in the impact fees, the City Commission continues to put the cost of the City's growth on the backs of the utility customers. Mm -hmm. As part of a, an article in the Brownsville Herald on April 19, 2008, below is a history of the number of studies and recommendations. Impact fee studies. 1990, R.W. Beck and Associates recommended $2,133 per lot study cost about 200000 in 2006, Black and Beach recommended 3,090 per lot. Study cost about 220,000. 2007, financial consultant economics, econ, econ, economics com was contracted by the former city commission majority to study the in, effects of impact studies for $70,000. But a present com, uh, commission majority stopped the study, saying it was evolving into a study on impact fee rates and could not be used without an engineering stamp. 2007, Black and Beach was contra uh, contracted by the Brownsville Public Utilities Board for another study which is underway. The cost is roughly 134000 uh, reference referenced to all the uh, total spent on studies since 1990, 624000 And you mentioned other studies as well. In September 2006, impact fees were raised to 2,133, but rescinded within two months out of pressure from developers. Today, developers continue to pay $2,070 a lot, which has been in effect over 18 years without ever increased, while the rates for PUB regular customers have increased numerous times. In 1990, the state of Texas intervened and raised customer rates, water rates by 36% and wastewater rates by 21%, respectively, in order to pay for necessary capital improvements. Families, regular customers cannot afford to continue subsidizing developers. The time is now. Taxpayers cannot afford more studies. We are looking at this commission right, looking to this commission right now to do what is right and represent the interests of families. Valley Interfaith says vote yes to increase impact fees to the $3,458 recommended by CIAC committee. Don't so that, it. and again, that was for the uh, Valley so Interfaith. Thank you, Pastor. Um, Commissioner, you want to say something? Oh. Ms. Leanne Greer. Uh, Leanne. Uh, Ms. Greer, sorry. Again, thank you for what you've done and welcome to our chambers, Mrs. Greer. Thank you, Comm Mayor, Commissioners. Last night, our president spoke on national TV and he Ms. said Greer? that he, he was preparing his budget predicated on a 2.6 growth figure for the year. He said the best the best the best other figures that the nation has come up with were two point nine and he felt that he was being conservative at two point six. So our two percent growth factor is extremely conservative. 
Now, the city prepared the land use assumptions, which said it's going to grow here, it's going to grow there. And we when we came up with the 2% growth figure, Mr. Simmons came to this microphone in this room and said, I believe you have the right figure. I believe 2% is the correct growth figure for the future. This is probably four or five months ago that he said that. So if we have the correct growth figure, then, then we have to come up with the numbers to make the services available for that 2% growth. And from there on, it's simply math. There's, there's no other way to look at it except that it's math. And so all of the developers were involved. Not everyone came to every meeting, but they were involved in every meeting. And I don't think I missed one meeting, so I'm pretty well aware of what went on. They had ample opportunity to come to the city, and in fact they did come to the city and give their input into the land use assumptions. So when the figure came out, it, it is a large number, and, and Mr. Resendez is correct. It, it will impact a very low-income person. But those people have paid, they have paid for their lot, and they have to expect that when they build their house, that they have water facilities and they have sewer functioning. And that's the purpose of this growth projections, is to make sure that that happens. And that the only reason I'm coming forward tonight is just to say that at least some of the developers agree with the 2% growth, and in that case, it's only math after that. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Greer. A motion to close. Uh, a motion, I'll second that. Uh, to close by Commissioner Garza, and a second by Commissioner Toriani. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I'll make a motion to well, adopt the. Actually, uh, actually, I'm going to make a motion. And Commissioner Atkins is recognized. Go ahead. I, I make a motion to adopt the, the what the impact fee study from PUB recommended, which is the 3,486. Yep. So we have a motion. I second that motion. We have a second by Commissioner Garza. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. 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 <clears throat> then I <clears throat> make a motion that we. Hold on. Uh, well, well, then we. I have two, I have two nays. You have two nays. Uh, I make a motion to modify his motion. And, well, no, I can do that. And I would modify it to the sum of $2,600 and make that the uh, recommended impact fee. And that is based on the fact that 73% of the people who are now currently getting impact fees and paying them are non-developers, and if you'll put up the page 28 on the Black and Beach on the on the Elmo. Before we go there, parliamentarian, we have a motion and a second, and we have th uh, three eyes that voted, and you have two nays. He hasn't voted. He needs to vote, or did, can he amend the motion? I don't think he can amend the motion at this point. Uh, he can't interrupt the motion to amend the motion. But he can what? He, he, all right. he we have a vote. vote. Wait, hang on. In the middle of the vote, right? Okay, so he, basically he can make a, mo make a motion to modify the motion and it would require a majority vote. Yes. So if you all want to vote to allow me to amend it, you can, and that's my motion is I'll to second. amend it. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to, to amend it uh, in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 2,600? No, no. Let, let him decide. No, hold on no, a second. He's to amend the motion. motion. No, let him decide. To, to amend make, the motion. Yeah, let him decide. He can decide. make his own vote. Yeah, so his own vote. Well, if I what's, your vote? what's your vote? So I stick vote. with the 34. Okay. So we have three ayes and those against? Nay. Nay. Garza, okay. you, you, you nay? Is that to amend the motion that you're saying? Not to amend the motion. So the, the second, the, the motion to amend dies. That's what you're saying. Let him decide. 
No, you know, he needs to make the motion. I don't want to amend it. If he wants to make a motion, just well, that's what I'm trying to do. Make a motion to amend. So go with the 2600. I will go with the 2600. So then you allow if, if, if I may, we're going to amend the, the 3486 in total. If, if we can say that the reduced amendment will be based on the same ratio, mm -hmm. water and wastewater. Yeah. That the 36, that the 3486 is. That's is fine. So, Commissioner Garza, your vote is yes. Yes to the 2600. If okay. I can get 34, we have a motion. Yes. yes. Second. Yes. And all yes. in favor is. Aye. Okay. okay. All yes. against, nay. Sorry. Right. So, how many nays? Just okay. one? Two nays. Two nays. Two nays. Okay, go with the motion. Okay, so then my motion, the amendment to the motion, would be that it is $2,600 and the ratios would be those as proposed by PUB in the, uh, the impact fee and the ratio exactly would be what? It would be the same composition of the 3486, water and wastewater. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, uh, any discussion? Okay, uh, Leandro, this is going to require rate increases. It's going to require no, because that was a whole no, but no. more. It's going to require. Mayor, you're you're trying to leave. It's going to require more rate increases in the future if no we're going we we to fulfill this plan. The, the, the twenty-six hundred in the in the third or fourth year will be hopefully will generate uh, enough to to support the debt service on that twenty-three million. So there should not no, no rate increase. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold there on, should Mayor. not be any consumer rate increases. Correct. That's correct. for the next five years. Correct. Thank you. you. So we're saving the rate increase. Second Thank the you. motion. Okay, so okay. This, this is not a 10-year plan then. All Second in favor? the motion. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No rate increase. Uh, no. How many nays? One. But I will add, and to get clarification on uh, people that have prepaid for the next well, I definitely years. want that too because we don't want to have people out there yeah. that aren't yeah. being a, aren't being held accountable. We don't, we don't want paying that. a different rate. We don't want, we don't want some developers having to pay that 2,600, but other developers have paid for for the 280 for the next five because that's not fair. That's not so, right. what's and be careful what you say because we're on TV and somebody's going to hold you all accountable on PV. What is the bottom line? Well, I think bottom the gentleman line provided us the document and he provided over If they don't build within a year. Then they have to pay. Is that correct, ma'am? Yeah, that's important to know. We need no, to know that. That's important to know yeah. because you, you got to be yes. fair with everybody. The, because the two developers that were shouting last week didn't show up. So I want to know and and be specific in what you say, Ben. Yes. If you don't know, please go sit down. The, the policy. Please. <laughs> no, uh, this yeah. will come before second reading, and when we come, we'll bring you documentation uh, to satisfy your concerns. Okay. Mayor, may I have the floor real quick? Sure. I just want to also add that, you know, and again, this hasn't been fully adopted yet. And again, considering that the, with, with the increase, no rate increase on the on the rate pair, but this should be reevaluated six months down the line to just make sure, because again, we're in a recession. I mean, we're in real tough times. So I don't think whatever happens the following meeting and this goes through, I think PUB's work is still not done. Things should be reevaluated to make sure that this will work. Maybe we can get UTB to lower their tuition too since the economy is bad. Well, that's, that has nothing to do with hey, the impact fee. Okay. I think, <laughs> okay. to do with I think, I think Commissioner uh, Atkinson, that we all succeeded in, in okay. not increasing uh, the rates on the rate payer, which is... Can we have, uh, hold on, Mayor. Hold on, Mayor. Hold on, Mayor. I'm not done. I guess what we, I'm happy that we succeeded with not having to increase the rate on the rate payer, which was, I think, our main objective and goal tonight. It should have been. Okay. Can we have the public comment period? Anybody want to make comments? Please. Just to clarify, on the impact fee portion, the 23 million, that will not affect the rate on the rate payer. Okay? But the rest of the presentation, the 212 million, the remaining percentage amount, that's what Leandro was going through his whole presentation. That does have and, and that's effect. What, that's, that, and that was my point because they're going to come back here and ask us to raise rates to fund that that sewer plan. So I, I just wanted to plan. clarify that point just and so that way everybody understands. Understand that they're going to come here and they're going to ask us to fund that sewer plan for those developers. Yeah, and you're going to have to vote for it. Okay. Five years or not. And just to clarify something too. 
it's 1,200 no toward piece. water and 1,400 toward the waste, right? Is that where we're at? On the, the spread up of the $2,600? Is it, is it 14 for the waste and 12 for the water? It's calculated like that. Mayor and Commissioner, you also need action on the language assumptions in important. You need action on item number one. Okay. Or item number two, I'm sorry. I thought we took action. Okay. You didn't take action on both? I thought we read both of them. We read both of them. We, we voted on both of them. We accepted the, the proposal. We modified it based on 4.0, which was up there on page uh, 28 of the Black and Beach study, and basically took into other considerations the impact on the community, and we came up with a term of $2,600 for an impact fee so that we wouldn't have to raise rates based on the representations of PUB's representatives over the next five years. Okay. Thank, Thank you. And I want to make it very clear oh, to the I citizens that are watching us, they're going to come back here and ask that we raise rates we to fund that sewer plant. They're going to do PUB that anyway. They're going to do it anyway, Mayor. Wait a second. Oh, I have, I have, I have, I have, they were going to do have, it anyway, Mayor. You have not been recognized. And my vote was Anthony. to accept Anthony. the plan as presented yeah. so we would have a fair and they balanced rate okay and growth it was not done that way so yes, when it, it comes back here it i was. cannot in good conscience vote to raise rates to build a sewer plant that's going to uh, subsidize the developers without them paying their fair share Maybe. The, increase, the, the increase was the made point. the increase was made rate pairs are being okay, protected we have public that's what it we're is not there. Else. what we're doing okay, is we protecting the rate pair. close the public i mean the motion to adjourn Motion, no, motion well, to adjourn. But well, we're protecting the right second, pair. And, and <clears throat> second. We have second. a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those who want to stay can stay. Man, what's up? I'm glad we protected the right pair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.